Hello there. Uh, for those that have been following me throughout my Saturday Superlative series last year and this year, and watching my friend Jeff Barnes and I on Draft Central, once again, I'm Bill Carroll of Consistence Draft Services. This is my enduring passion, uh, discussing football players. And I get the great uh, opportunity today to add someone to my collection. Uh, <laughs> so, Jake Ellenbogen, uh, is that Dutch, German? Uh, it is German, and you got it like right on the dot. So I appreciate you, uh, you know, with your pronunciation, you're spot on. <laughs> well, somewhere out there, my my German teacher from like ninth grade would be smiling. I have not, seen <laughs> but some of it stuck with me. Uh, this is the time of year when people who are uh, focused for whatever reason on the sport of football. One, you have pro football, right? Like the beginning of the season. Uh, we don't know who's good or who's bad yet, but we're starting to figure that out. Uh, we're obviously a few key injuries, all that kind of thing. But for those of us who already are thinking about the draft, and that's not everybody, normal people, you know, wait until the season's over. But I am not normal. Uh, so I've been obviously thinking about the draft since a few weeks after the end of the last draft. And that's not everybody. It's, no, it's okay if you're not one of those people. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, in fact, like I said, it's probably the healthier choice. But there are some players that have caught your eye. So who are the players that you have been most excited about watching this season and why? Well, I will tell you right now, um, the guy I could not wait to watch this season, number one, has no connection. I don't have any sort of fandom for the team that he's on. So this is a real true unbiased take here. It is Desmond Ritter. Uh, look, this is somebody that I was looking at for the Rams as an insurance type of guy. I did a video on my YouTube channel, said, look, you know, with Jared Goff, I feel like the Rams are going to need some insurance. And I think the way I took that is I saw the Eagles go out and get Jalen Hurts in the second round. It was like, that was genius. They have insurance to Wentz. And so then Goff gets hurt. And I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm watching Ritter tape and I'm like, this is the guy I want. He's going to be there in the second round. They, as you know, they never have first round picks, so he'll be there. <laughs> and uh, and then that didn't happen. Uh, Ritter decided to come back and he made the right choice here. He Here's right why. Choice, right. <laughs> um, he would have been a second round pick and even potentially a first round pick. However, he wouldn't have gone in the best situation. And he obviously wasn't going to get paid as much as he'll get paid if he goes through another year of college football learning and just every single bit. You know, I feel like this is somebody and this is why he's actually my QB one this year. Um, I've been out there in QB ones. I'm not really the consensus. I had Lamar Jackson as QB one back in 2018. I I remember, Uh, you know, I had Mahomes. Um, you know, Kyler Murray was really the only consensus. I guess Joe Burrow as well. So the last couple, but. Uh, yeah. I really am, am high on Ritter. Um, I look oh, at my. him. He, he's not, and I'm going to say this right now. He's not Patrick Mahomes, but he's <clears throat> probably the closest thing I've seen as far as the yeah. boom or bust potential. I think yeah. you're looking okay. at a guy that is either going to hit it home uh, when he gets to the NFL or he's not, but either way you can work with him. You can work with the tools he has and worst, very worst case scenario here with his running ability be looking at Logan Thomas where he has to switch positions or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I really been, do like him. I've been a fan of him since his retro freshman year. And he finally sort of took over the job full time the next year after that. Um, he's been through some peaks and valleys, right? Yeah. Guys, I see when I watch him, uh, of course, I'm older than you are. So I remember I watched Aaron Brooks in high school, right? Aaron Brooks, of course, amongst other things, is a cousin of Michael Vick and Marcus Vick. Uh, played for the same coach at the same high school, Minchville High School, right, in Newport News, Virginia. Uh, Some of the same things that I like about him, I like about Ritter, and some of the things I dislike, right? They both have not exactly classic mechanics, right? I mean, exactly. if you're like a quarterback mechanics, like, nerd, uh, nobody who is is going to love Desmond Ritter, right? The real mechanics nerds are finding every not everything, but lots of things to pick apart. This Uh, is true. His mechanics aren't even always the same, right? It's the other thing. Like, what is one thing when a guy has one problem? It's like, oh, he just has a little hitch. We'll tighten that up. Sometimes he has a tighter motion than other times. I don't know if it's, you know, maybe because he's working with a coach and then in the heat of, you know, battle, he goes back to his old mechanic. I don't know. But he's capable of looking like a guy who should go in the top 15 picks. He's also capable of a guy that should, looks like he should not go in the first 150 picks. Uh, and I'm a fan, right? I'm, I'm saying this, right? So I can understand why people fall out of love. 
But here's the things I really like. He's a mentally tough kid. He has been through a fair amount. And I think he decided to come back for two reasons. One, I think I think draft stock was part of it because he would have probably gone, yeah, she said second round, maybe even tail into the first if a team was super desperate uh, to try to get a young quarterback. But he has a chance to be in the fight with, you know, Spencer Rattler's opened the door, right? People were just anointing him for reasons I never fully understood. We're just anointing him, right? Um, he's in a very QB-friendly system where if you don't look great, something's wrong, right? Um, if you don't look great in that system, then it's a system where they really make it, I won't say easy, easy is a stronger word, but if you have talent, they're going to maximize it, I guess would be the way I'd put it. He's not asked to do a whole lot. Um, the things he's asked to do, he has to make some fairly tough throws in that system they have at Oklahoma because uh, a lot of three-level right, you know, layering, you know, where they have a, a short, medium, and deep option, and if the deep option's there, you're supposed to take it, right? Um, but they, a lot of it's just middle field open, middle field closed. Here's the thing that's going to make your life easy as a quarterback, and then if you don't like it, run. Um, if you can't look great in that in that system, then it makes me a little frightened. I'm a little scared, first of all. Um, my guy is Carson Strong, and I love Desmond Ritter, too. Um, I've been on Desmond Ritter guy for a long time, but Carson Strong is a little more developed in terms of – both of his mechanics are always the same, right? He's, he's – like, I'm not having to I, – I, I did some look uh, – some, I did some looking at uh, Ritter going all the way back to 2019, and there were times I was like, hey, wow, right? That's what I fell in love with. And then, like, the next year, it's like, what? What did you? What are you doing, right? And then, and then, but like he's 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 getting back to the guy I fell in love with. So I think if and also his body has changed. I wonder if that's part of it too. He's put on I think thirty two pounds, if my memory serves, uh, since he he first took his first nap at Cincinnati. Um, so yeah, he was, I think you're right. I think he was. Uh, I think the first time he took a snap, he was like one hundred eighty nine pounds, <laughs> and he's like tall. I mean, he's like six four and change. So his body, he's now in the Almost 220, I think. I think he's like upper two teens, almost 220. So he's put on a significant amount of weight. And some for some guys, it's nothing. Like they just, you know, but some guys, their body's trying to figure out, you know, we used to be a little more flexible, less strong. How do we deal with this? But I'm a, I'm a fan. And I, I, I think he has a chance to do special things this year. I, I'm looking forward, one, to seeing if he can get that team into the playoffs because that's yes. going to get to pay attention, right? That's the first thing, one. And then two, senior bowl. Um, I don't see how you would not invite him to the senior bowl. There's lots of quarterbacks, but very few of them are actual seniors, right? So um, I don't see how you – who else would you send if not him? Uh, there's not that many other seniors. He's got to be the headliner, right? I would hope, right? I mean, so I, I'm not even about to – I don't think I'm going to have to – I used to make Jim Nagy's life a living heck uh, the last couple of weeks leading up to the – but I think this is what I wanted to bother him about. I'm pretty sure that, that he'll be there. Uh, I like some of the other guys on that team. Cincinnati, I mean, don't be fooled by the fact they're playing the AAC folks. That they've got they've got pass rushers who are gonna go early. They've got Boss Gardner. Oh yeah. I mean I love him. Sanders, and they've got guys, right? Their receivers aren't first or even second or even third round types, but they're mid rounders that are gonna make somebody's team. They're gonna block punts, you know, like they're 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 I, I hate to say like things like gritty and scrappy because it makes them sound like they aren't talented. They have talent too, but they are legitimately gritty and scrappy. Yeah. Like I, no, absolutely. I'm not saying that as an insult. Like sometimes it comes off as a, you know, you're saying it like, oh, you're Daddy Amendola. No, these guys have talent, but they all. I like Amendola. <laughs> but right, no, no, right. I mean, no, you know I know what, what I mean. mean. <laughs> well, but last year I watched this team and I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, Derek Forrest is making plays. You know, a beast. I mean, beast. and it wasn't just him. It was, um, and no. I came, I can't remember. All of them. Kobe yeah. Bryant. Um, the other one, um, he was my number two safety, and I'm losing his name right now. He's Derek on the, Forrest, the Cardinals. Maybe? No, you always said Derek Forrest. Are you talking about um, uh, Mike? Oh, God, I know exactly what you're talking about. The oh. thicker. Um, I know exactly. I can picture him in my mind. Wiggins. James Wiggins. Thank you. Yes, Love James Wiggins. Thick, thick boy. Love yes, him. he's a thick boy. Yeah, he's. It, if he didn't get hurt, man. He's oh, not going you. in the seventh round. No. He, he's just not. Like, I, I would have I mean, taken him, even with the injury, I would have taken him in the mid-fifth and, and called myself lucky. I actually had him. He's my second safety. I just didn't know how bad the injury would be. I, right. you know, I was going right. just entirely based on the tape, and I saw second second safety oh. in, the, in the draft. And I saw oh, yeah. sixth, yeah. seventh for Forrest, which I thought was higher than most people were, were grading him. 
Um, but there were other guys that kind of slipped through the cracks. I mean, I was really high on DeMar Hamlin, and everyone's telling me to go and watch the other guy at Pitt, who the Rams, who I have very a, a ton of familiarity with since I cover <laughs> them, everyone was saying, that, you know, to, to, ha- to watch this guy. And, yeah. um, you know, I was looking at him, and I'm like, you know, Paris Ford, I'm not seeing it. But with, with DeMar <laughs> Hamlin, I think yeah. this guy can play. And sure enough, he got drafted right. by the Bills. Right. And, you know, it's there are guys like that, like uh, Tyree Gillespie. I think he went to the Patriots, I want to say. Yep. Um, yep. You know, there, there's a bunch of safeties last year that kind of fell through the cracks. And James Wiggins was a guy I didn't expect to fall through the cracks. Yeah. Well, it's happened before. It happens right. all the time. I like this, every year, you know, this one guy. Uh, I mean, I understand the build was quite yeah, he, we weren't sure how he's going to project. But I think maybe with the right offense, he would have done something. Remember Brandon Coleman from Rutgers? Oh, oh, <laughs> I really liked him. I do more. I can do more than remember him. I was at his freaking pro day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yes. really like that guy, and I don't. I feel like you know, if he went to the, you know what I mean. If he went to the right offense, he could have been sure. kind of similar to what Waller ended up being. Not saying he would have been never. Waller, but yeah. No. Well, the difference is one that Waller embraced. I mean. That's also true. Coleman people, did people not want to play tight it, end. People think it's an easy switch to make, but guys struggle with it, and most don't make it. Um, it's yeah, it, it seems similar. It's like, oh, well, you're still running routes, yeah, but not quite so often. Like, oh, and you want me to block JJ Watt? Okay, um, it's a different mindset. Yeah, right? that's what it is. You have to you you're lifting differently. You're eating differently. You're spending more time with the offensive line coach than you did before, you know, uh, you might've seen the offensive line coach a bit like hi and bye. Now you're picking his brain. Like it's a very different relationship when you say, okay, I'm going to play tight end. Waller embraced it. A lot of guys don't. There's a long list of guys. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll start with, um, oh, um, from Michigan, um, ruined himself by trying to turn himself to a wide receiver. Um, not ruined, but, He's not having the career he would have had. Uh, thank you. Devin Funches. If he'd embraced, yeah. I'm tight end one. I'm TE one. I'm I'm going to show up maybe seven to eight pounds heavier than before, showing you I can block a little bit. You don't have to be a killer. Just so you can block a little bit. He'd have he'd be having a very different career. But he was so determined to show everyone he could play wide receiver. He showed up lighter. You know, he I understand the ego part of it, right? I'm a wide receiver, right? That's, that's an ego thing, right? It's an ego thing, right? When you say I'm a wide receiver, you're saying I'm a – it's like saying I'm a peacock, right? I mean, you're, yeah. Like, no, that's a good point. Right? You're saying, look at my beautiful plumage, right? You don't get to do that when you're a tight end, right? When you're George Kittle, even though everyone loves him, you're not showing off your plumage, right? Yeah. You're angry runs. You're, you're wham blocking. Apparently not with the the 49ers. My God. I mean, fantasy football, he has what, four points all season long or something like that? Well, part of it is they know that defenses are keying on it more, right? So they things up for other people. Well, that's just smart football. But, yes, if you're a fantasy voter who who got Kittle early and, you know, you're probably not happy. And it's smart smart football. You just have to fight through it. He's going to have some big days. He's going to have a three-touchdown day at some point. Oh, yeah, he's – He's you know. special. He was my favorite tight end that draft. And everyone was saying, no, no, no. And Joku, Ingram. I mean, yeah. and I'll be honest with you. OJ Howard, when people bring that up, I don't hate on that. I like Oh, I nailed, I nailed that one. I tried to tell everyone who would listen. OJ Howard's not what you think he is. I, I like him, though. And I, Oh, I, he's a fine player. But he he's not. To get out of people camp. were thinking he was going to be. First of all, he wasn't super productive in college. Let's start with that. Well, yes. And, and that's another thing in Alabama – you know, I, as somebody, I like Alabama, and I will tell you that there are players, believe it or not, that out of their, you know, crop of amazing talent, it's easy to find a player that gets overrated because he's sure. got the number oh, and the, the crimson the on his helmet. Well, if you, first of all, if you play defensive back for Alabama, people just push you up an extra round over where you should go anyway. This right? is true. This that is happened true. a bunch it of times. It didn't happen to Savion Smith, though. It's happened to a bunch of guys. It's an extra <laughs> well, round. He went, he went undrafted, but, but right, no. Right, right. Um, but, but, but the Saban effect. It's the Saban effect. DBs automatically get pushed up the oh, board. Oh, yeah. Automatically. Now, a lot of you guys are also great defensive backs. I mean, like, I'm not just dismissing that. But when people say, when Saban says, oh, yeah, I like this kid, Right, you know, I'm 
push it up the board just because. It's uh, funny though. It's like, what is he supposed to say? That's gonna get more people to come. It's just, it's like, right. I never right. understood that. Like, oh well, well Manny Diaz is saying he can play receiver in his system, so yeah, let's just draft him the first. Like, Manny Diaz is trying to sell his program so he can get right. the next guy to replace that receiver. So what are you talking? Right. <laughs> right. I mean, and plus, crazy. what if word gets out you're trashing your kids to scouts, you're oh, dead. Yeah. Like, you exactly. might as well just, right, you know, call ESPN and ask if there's like a slot available for Thursday night football or whatever at that point, because <laughs> you're done in college if word gets out you're trashing kids. Oh, so yeah. it's a fine line when you're a coach. Like, you want to be semi honest, but here's, you know, I wasn't planning to talk about Jonathan Paul Manzel, but I'll, I'll throw this brief aside. So I'm, I'm old school. I'll pick up the phone and call people. They don't always take my call, but sometimes they do. And I, I talked to somebody. I won't name the coach, but this is somebody who was a, a coach, a, a, you know, a, a farther down the food chain coach, not a head coach, obviously, because they don't pick up the phone. But a farther down the food chain coach at Texas A&M. And I just called and said, hey, you know, I'm writing a story about the quarterbacks in the draft, blah, 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 blah. And I've heard some stuff, right, because I'd heard stuff about Manziel. And I was like, can you yeah. – Confirm or deny. And he said, I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. But, <laughs> and that's, but is one of the most powerful words in the English language. Oh, man. Said, we're not, we're not broken up that he's leaving. That's what he said. We're not broken up that he's leaving. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. <laughs> I, I, needed I did not like Manziel. And I, when I kept seeing, you know, Rams fans chanting for him, I was like, please, God, no. Please. Please, God, no. Right. I right. mean, please, no. I, you know, it's it's already hard enough, you know, watching all these guys trot out like Kyle Bowler and AJ Feely and <laughs> Scott Covington and Sam Bradford, which honestly, I think Bradford was talented, but he couldn't stay healthy. And they right. they, they, like, even right. they, they gave what eight million dollars a year to uh, Jake Long and he couldn't protect him in preseason. So, I mean, at that yep. point he was doomed. Yep. But yes. no, I did not want. I did not want Manziel. And some, when people were players... trying to compare Baker to him, I had to push back because they're completely right. different. You're going entirely based on the stature. I mean, in the in the spunk, right? Because and right, you know, right, the kind of kind of the chip on the shoulder, a little bit of sneer or whatever. But here's the, here's the thing that jumps at you. First of all, one guy was this could have gone anywhere, anywhere he wanted to go. Could have gone to Oregon. Could have gone to Alabama. Could have gone to right. That's not the story of Baker Mayfield. No, no. <laughs> like it's the it's he almost the Patrick opposite Mahomes. story. Right, right. It's and, almost the opposite like, story. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is a guy that had to fight and scratch and claw. Right. So if you look past the externals and you look to the actual internals of these two individuals, radically different. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So Jonathan Paul Manziel, talented kid. I, I never had a problem with his talent. His arm is fine, but he, he was definitely in an offense that, once again, makes it easy, easier. And people forget, I think three of his receivers got drafted and another one made it into somebody's camp. Right. So. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, if, can you imagine if Baker was throwing up to uh, Mike Evans every play in college? Right, but Ricky Seals Jones was on that team. Um, who were the other two? Uh, was Kirk there? I don't think Christian Kirk was there yet. No, Kirk, Kirk wasn't there. But it was. Yeah, okay, I wasn't sure if it was, it was they, Kirk. They had another. They had a slot receiver. He was a little white dude. Uh, that's a little. You know, was it Ryan Swopes? Um, Swopes? Oh yeah, I think it was. Swopes. Swopes got brought into camp, but can was Speedy Noel there yet? Noel was there. Yep. I liked they, him. That was a bummer. They, right. Yeah. Well, once again, and we, we'll talk off air about Speedy Noel. I know some things about him too. <laughs> um, life, it's some lifestyle stuff with some guys. I mean, they, you know, they got other things going on. <laughs> we'll, like I said, we'll talk off air. Uh, if you want to, if you want to know the, the skinny. Uh, but yeah, this, but Mike Evans was a guy that was my wife. She one. And when, partially because I saw what he was make, how he was making that look good. People forget <laughs> It's that's all through a lot of what I call area balls, right? It's in the area, right? I mean, it's there. If you're good enough, if you're Mike Evans, you're probably gonna catch it, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, and he also, speaking of concussions, he threw also some hospital balls, right? Swope can talk up <laughs> those concussions to get hung out to dry in front of oncoming safeties. Um, oh tough, man, I, I wish him luck wherever he is now. But he had a bunch of really good receivers. And yeah, what Kristen? Not Kristen Michael. Um, Michael was gone by then, I think. It was, but he had a he had a really good running back too. I can't remember the running back's name, but it, it was loaded, right? He had a trade. Oh, yeah. with the line. He had a, four of the receivers he threw to ended up in the NFL. Some of them stuck, 
Ricky Seals Jones is now a tight end, but he's still there. Obviously, Mike Evans is Mike Evans. Um, but <laughs> everybody at least got, got there. My main issue with him was, like I said, stuff. I heard stuff. I heard stuff even when he, before he got to college about him, right? And some people say, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't grade or I don't, I don't scout a uh, character. Well, then what are you doing? I mean, like, like I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know what stopped me? Um, what, what got me on the right path, so to speak? Uh, I'll tell you, it was Chad Kelly. I like Chad oh. Kelly's film a ton. Oh. But yes. all I kept hearing was that this guy is a headache. And I was like, you know what? Yes. I don't care. He's going to be the guy that surprises everyone in the NFL. And sure enough, no, he's not. He's still a headache. <laughs> he didn't yes. get it together. And no. I mean, it, it's a shame because he had a ton of talent, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. what, QB2 for me. And I know a lot of people oh. really liked him in draft Twitter. So, you know, I mean, I was – well, I yeah. shouldn't have been surprised, swag. but that will me up. Yeah, swag, right? That is rap yeah. name swag. Um, swag. So, once again, people bring up Baker Mayfield um, to some yeah. extent. Some there's and there's some external similarities, right? White boy with swag, right? But that's they're, they're the stories kind of end. Um, despite what you want to say about anything else, you say Baker Mayfield, he was always a guy that just consumed film like it was air. He was always a he was a grinder, 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 grinder. That does not describe either of the last two guys we, that we were compared to him in no. any way, shape, or form. I mean, not even a little teeny tiny bit. And the thing about the quarterback position is we all know about the fun parts, but it's a very boring position most of the time. You are mostly yeah. doing boring stuff, right? And some guys never embrace the boring stuff, and that's why they aren't in the league right now. If you don't say, I'm willing to spend this time looking at tape from three years ago from when the defensive coordinator was with a whole different team, right? It was a, right. I mean, you can, you're not just watching the stuff that you think pe people understand that, Oh, you're watching this team you're about to play. You're not just doing that, especially with the elite quarterbacks. They're digging in the, in the, in the crates, right? Hey, they might be bringing back this whisk package. They last did it, blah, 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 right? You're looking at what this guy did with Seattle before he came to this. You're looking at all this crazy stuff. They're getting the film interns uh, working. <laughs> like, oh, you're going to have to go back. Uh, this is Tom Brady we're playing. We're going to pull out the tape from 10 years ago. Right. So when you look at the guys that, like, that's their lifestyle, right? Which yeah. lifestyle? Some guys, I mean, say what you want about some guys. Say Teddy, Teddy Google, Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater, who was my QB2, I think, his year. A lot of people were like, he's skinny, doesn't have a great arm. It's like, we know who else is skinny, doesn't have a great arm. Joe Montana. Like, sometimes, I mean, not, I'm not comparing to Joe Montana, but. No, no, I got you. Because right, 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 I'm, I'm not insane. But there's some guy who, that's it. I'm a quarterback, right? And they commit to it. Teddy, Teddy Two Gloves could have walked away with a nice injury settlement with what is got from his signing bonus and whatever he had left from his rookie deal and been training high school quarterbacks or whatever it is he would have gone on to do instead. He you know, almost, almost Alex Smith level, right? I mean, that was an injury where people weren't sure he was going to walk normally, right? Yeah. It was supposed to be off the table. Like, oh, no, this is not a come back and play football injury. This is a we hope you can walk okay injury. You know, like his, I don't know if you saw it, but like there was, there was things where they way away from where they're supposed to be. Like you're like, <laughs> that's the way to put it. Right? I mean, that's not where that. That's, that's, not, that's a good reminder, though. It's incredible where Teddy is right now and, and the fact that he's starting and not only starting. And I said this last year, I've never been huge on Teddy Bridgewater. I always felt he was more of a game manager, but yeah, last year yeah. in Joe Brady's offense, I saw this guy emerge and actually throw the football down the field. And it's like, everyone wants to knock because I have the Panthers this year winning 11 games. They could have won that many games last year. They could were in all sorts of one possession games. Furthermore, without Christian McCaffrey, yeah, yes. we can pretend and have a feel-good story for Mike Davis. Mike Davis is not Christian McCaffrey. No, first but Mike Davis is better than everyone thought. And I, yes, that, that was that made cool. me feel good because I loved Mike Davis back in South Carolina. I was like, why is no one liking Mike Davis? What's wrong with Mike Davis? I couldn't get – it's like, hey. You are not the only one, though, because I think Mike Davis is, might be the most <laughs> likable dude in the NFL because everyone was so happy for him to get that <laughs> opportunity. And right. then seeing what he could do with it, it's just – when you have nothing there and you can just dump it off to McCaffrey and he can take it 30 yards out of the blue, that's just a godsend. And sure. obviously, Darnold, we'll see what he does without him. 
uh, cause he's yeah. going to be without him for the next three weeks. I he's think Darnold's going to, going to continue doing what he's doing right now. I'm really impressed with him. And I think honestly, it's comparable to what Bridgewater did last season. I think they really just wanted a younger guy. They wanted their own guy <laughs> and Bridgewater gets an opportunity with Denver. I feel for drew lock. Uh, because I really do feel like, you know, last year was his true first rookie season. Right. And then he right. hurts his shoulder in week two against the Steelers. He also got Corlin Sutton hurt chasing down his interception. So he yep. loses Sutton. It was it just felt like a lost year all around. Yeah. They lose Von Miller to kick off the year. It just felt like this is not. They were snake bit. Year. Denver yeah. was flat out snake bit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so it's I, like, I it's like the Chargers so rubbed off of them. Yes, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So here's the good news. Drew Locke's going to get an opportunity to be a starting quarterback someplace. Probably I not. I believe so. <clears throat> someplace else. And he's going to, depending on where he lands, he might really blossom. Um, I'm half kind of hoping he ends up with the Steelers, you know, that he could compete with. That'd be <laughs> with, interesting. With a who reclamation project award for quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, here's the things I like about a guy like, like Locke. He's solidly grounded as a person, right? He's a good, decent human being. There's no wild, crazy. You I know, love wild. his interviews at the Senior Bowl. He's a good way. dude. He's a good dude. Yeah. He's not super accurate. He wasn't in high school. He wasn't in college. He's unlikely to become super accurate ever. But are there teams that can work through that? Who can work around that? There, right? There's a few teams who can. The the funny thing is, the thing he's best at is throwing the ball deep. Right? I, I worry about him. I'd rather have him. It's not, <laughs> but I'd rather have him throw like a forty yard out. You have that out, but um, um I know um, what you mean. Then, then like a, I've heard then this like before. Big, People are like, yard out. Yeah, I'm more comfortable with this dude throwing 40 yards down the field than I am throwing him. You know, having to throw a bubble screen. You know, <laughs> well, look, well, look at his interceptions. They're almost yeah. all the middle of the field not where he shines. Right? I don't like 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 take the dig routes out of your playbook, basically. Right? Let's just oh. if you want Drew lock to be your quarterback, you kind of have to. It sounds funny, but turn back the clock. Hey, let's look at that 1966 Raiders film. Uh, because really, he's Daryl LaMonica, only more athletic. He's a guy, his, he's a bomber. And if you're okay with a guy who's going to complete about 54.5% of his passes, because that's about where he's never going to, probably going to be, but you're getting 20 something yards of completion, then you can live with that. Now, you have to have a really good offensive line because it's seven step drop season. Uh, and you have to have a really good run game so you can at least hold people and play action. But but he's just not – he's not a precision passer, right? That's not everybody. I mean, it, like you have to – either you have to be okay with that or he's not going to be your starting quarterback. And Vic Fangio doesn't like risk. Yes, uh, Vic Fangio does not like work. risk. This was a marriage that was doomed from the start. Yes. It sounds like you described a fit for him um, just now until you mentioned the run game, of course, because they haven't kind of figured it out yet. Tampa. So if Tampa after, figures out the run game, yes. Right. Yeah. So like if Brady were, say, to retire after this year and they went out and just like, hey, will you take a fourth for Locke? We want to have a chance to develop him. Dem- I think Denver said be yes win, before you win. got to the last. You didn't get to finish your sentence. When you said fourth, Denver was like, he, he <laughs> already. Well, I, I think you still could get a pick for him like that. I mean, he was a yeah. second round pick. I think he's still right. his value. Yes. Um, he's you know, 24. Wait, 25. 25. I, yeah, I, he, I think he's 24. He came out as a junior, I believe. Right. I'm trying to remember if he, he, he hasn't, you know, he hasn't, right, he hasn't turned 25. He turns 25 later. Okay. So he's 24 and change. So you're getting yeah. a guy who's mobile with a very strong arm. I mean, <laughs> My, my comparison for him coming out, and of course he ended up in Denver, so it made me feel even weirder about it, was I, I said he's Cutler, right? He's Jake Cutler, except with a better attitude, right? He's yeah. Jake Cutler with a better attitude. <laughs> but all, all the strengths, all the weaknesses, the arm, the mobility, the toughness, he's a tough kid. Um, but the ball doesn't always go exactly where you think it's going. If you can live with that, right? I mean, you've got to be okay with that. If you're going to embrace, just like people embrace Jake Cutler. I still know people who defend Jake Cutler, right? They're Jared Cutlerites still out there, Jake, in case you're wondering. God bless them. Um, but if you want a guy who's going to <clears throat> drive tax with the ball, right? If you want a guy who's going to put, like when a guy's, you know, throwing, no, he's not going to throw guys open. Guys have to get open. That's the difference. If, if you've got guys who can get open, right, either because of their size or because they're incredibly quick, then you can make it work, especially deep down the field. I, I just, 
I would take a lot of that middle of the field stuff away. That's just kind of – Yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear you there. I mean, I, look, like Tampa would obviously have to get rid of the middle of the field stuff because they do like that with Brady. They love it because that's where Tom Brady kills you. But that's, 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 that's in the, the – Yeah, that's definitely in the – at least I get that vibe. It's in the playbook because of Brady. Like, I yes. feel like if it was Trask, they probably would keep it. But if it was Locke, probably not. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, and and Trask I feel good about Leftwich, too. You know, I feel good yes. about him running the show. Um, felt good about him, you know, with the, the Arizona Cardinals. I think a bunch yeah. of teams missed out on him, to be honest with you. Um, yes, I mean, I would say that about a lot of <laughs> a lot of coaches. I still there's still people that want to want Vic Fangio fired and you know over in Denver I I'm definitely not one of those people I really do feel like you know his defense is legit I think they finally got the offense they got some sort of continuity there and you know find me one issue with the Broncos right now I obviously have only played the Giants and the Jaguars I'm higher in the Giants than most Jaguars might be the worst team in football Um, (laughs) but you know find me a true weakness with the Broncos because I can't find it if Bridgewater continues to play this way. If that was to play this way, right? His own you know? running game is above average, not great, but above average. Yeah. Their offensive line is well above average. Their defense is, as you said, one of the top five or six in the NFL, unless something I'm missing. Yeah. Um, I guess the only thing, and once again, it's kind of picking, you know, nitpicking. Yeah, exactly. Um, their wide receiver depth is not awesome. Uh, if they they're they're one more injury, and of course you know injuries happen, but they're one more injury away from having to kind of scrape, you know, to put guys out there at receiver. It's funny because oh. it, it would have been pretty good had they not traded away Trinity Benson and had you know Deshaun uh, was Deshaun Hamilton Day, 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 not Day, 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 yep, just yep. completely fallen off a cliff because yeah. you know at the Senior Bowl and then you watching him in the NFL, that was not the same receiver. I don't know what it was, but he oh, just did not translate. Was so, he not one of your guys? This is no, no. So here's, here's what people forget, right? Yeah. How does he get open? He's a guy that throws three moves at people, right? Yeah. And they're like I call it and one mixtape, right? He's an and one mixtape wide receiver, and that's how people sold themselves on Braxton Miller coming out, right? Because they oh, saw yeah, that makes sense. Take moves. The problem is you don't have that much time to get open in the NFL. By the time he's open, the quarterback is either throw the ball already or he's on the ground. So he needs to become more efficient. He needs to find somebody and say, one, I need to get physically stronger. How can I actually just get a, 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 a back off, the defense back off immediately without three different moves, right? And the moves are beautiful. Like, we all loved his moves, right? But you just don't have that amount of time. It's not seven on seven anymore. And it's not Penn State anymore. Uh Quarterbacks are getting the ball out in 2.3, 2.2, 2.4, 2.5. That's a great point. I've never actually heard that mention. It makes so much sense. It's probably why Andy Isabella is struggling as well. All the man one mixtape receivers struggle when they get to the NFL. Some of them and one mixtape receiver. That's going to stick. Yes, I'm going to remember that. Because they got all the moves. It's like, oh, man, look at that. Wow, he crossed him over. He did this. He skipped to my loot. I mean, it's cool, but you don't have that kind of time. So when people were getting all goo goo gaga over him at the Senior Bowl, and just like when they got goo goo gaga over Braxton Miller, I remember saying, you know, he's going to have to retool. Like that stuff isn't going to sell. Like you can't work. There's too much. There's not much. Four seconds, three seconds, none of that. If you if you can't do it, if you can't be off the line into your route and where the ball's coming in about two seconds or one point eight seconds, then forget it. You can't do all that. <laughs> Braxton should have just called up uh, Michael Thomas from Ohio State and been like, "Hey, how do you do it, man?" Because he's How'd got. He and Keenan Allen have some of the best footwork, but it's it, it's yeah. like you said, it's like it's quick. They, it's they're able to, yeah, they're yeah. able to get out of their break and ever like it, it's. There's no wasted motion, so to speak. Nope. It's almost like there's also an issue. Robert Woods, I Cooper Cup, all those guys. It's immediate. You know? There's yeah, none of that. Exactly. <laughs> no, <laughs> Dan Jefferson too. All of them. They have they a certain love, archetype. You can see that they want to go after. They them. have a type, right? The 49ers have a type. Do you look kind of like a running back? Come on down, right? You know was really underrated? Uh, he had to retire, unfortunately. Doug Baldwin. He had a really good, uh, you know, he, off the line of scrimmage. I mean, he was very crafty. And yep. this is somebody that people would be like, you know, oh, Doug Baldwin, like, who is this? Like, he doesn't, well, his name doesn't blow you through the roof, but right. he was and a famously, very good player. And famously, Deion Sanders got into it. Remember that? When he yeah. called, called, the, called the receivers at Seattle, I, <laughs> and Doug Baldwin was like, da 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 
Dion is always getting into it with somebody. You don't you remember he he said like there's nobody good in the back end of the secondary for the Titans or or you know who the hell is is Kevin Byard and Kevin was like furious. only only the best safety or one of the best. I yeah, mean I, he is one of the best. I mean he's he's I, awesome. I mean other than Derwin James, so there's Derwin James is kind Derwin of James is phenomenal. He's I, in his own tier. I, I love Jesse Bates, by the way. Love him. Oh, Bates is Bates is going up with a bullet. Like he's yeah. going in the direction. He's not quite there yet, but he he's in the same tier with a guy like Kevin Byard. He's in the same tier with some of the top. He's not, you know, Derwin James is to me by himself. I but, Derwin James is like another. I mean, he's not Jalen <laughs> Ramsey, but he's the closest thing to it. So I only he's like, a safety. He's two hundred nineteen yeah, pounds. Exactly, and he. <laughs> You know, Brandon Staley knew what he was doing. I don't think he would have taken that job if he didn't see Derwin James and Joey Bosa. Like, oh, that's my Donald and Ramsey. I mean, they don't have to be those guys. No one is Aaron Donald, but he at least had pieces to work with. And yep. that's why I'm super, super high on the Chargers, because I feel like they got a fantastic young coach and yep. uh, they have a quarterback, which they haven't had one in, in a minute. You know, that could truly get them over the hump. I mean, right. Philip Rivers is Phillip a, Rivers in his prime yeah. was a top four or five quarterback for a he while. Right. And, you know, he once we talked about I said the whole you know Chargers snake bit thing. I mean, they were the definition of snake Oh before. god, yeah. It would, it would be a key injury at the wrong time, a, a clanked field goal, a, a dropped punt. It was always something. It was always – they found the most mind-boggling ways to lose games. They, things that just couldn't happen. Things that never happened. Things that only happened to them. Uh, so yes, yes. I don't know how they lost that game, by the way, this this past weekend. They – they went away because from the run. Still the Chargers, apparently. Eckler was averaging over six yards to carry, and they stopped running the football. I don't understand. <laughs> as a as an Austin Eckler fantasy owner, I I, I definitely agree that they they give <laughs> it too soon. Um, oh man, so yeah. well it's funny. Like if you want to keep telling us over and over again, yeah, this guy he he could be a workhorse. He can be that back. Okay, then give it to him in that capacity. Don't sit here, give him nine carries, and then argue with the media about them being like, "Hey, is Eckler? Or can we can we take him seriously as a, a you know a, the number one back? Because you're only giving him nine carries." We're like, yeah, I don't know why you would say that. I mean, he's fully capable. We know he's capable. Give him twenty <laughs> carries. Let this guy roll. If you want to call him the muscle happens. hamster? Fine, let him go. Like, let him be like Doug Martin early on in his career. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's yeah. ridiculous at this point. <laughs> they lost but that game my- because they didn't run the football. <laughs> Right. And, and the thing is that that's something they do really well. Like they did it well when they had Melvin Gordon. They did it like they've always brought, like that's a one through line. Yeah. The Chargers can go back. I mean, I'm, I'm super old, but, but so look up Keith Lincoln. They've run the ball well forever, right? Literally since the, since they were founded as a team. I, yeah. <laughs> they've always run the ball well. They, the issue, as you said, is sometimes they forget it that they yeah. love the football. Like we know, act like you know. I feel like McVeigh also does that too at the Rams, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and I'll tell you who used to be guilty of it, buddy. I think he's finally cured himself or somebody cured him. Sean Payton used to be guilty of it as well. Yeah. Well, I used to call it Sean Payton syndrome. Would he get too cute? Was he, did he get the hang of it last week? Because <laughs> I think Alan McNamara had like eight carries for a yard or something. I don't know. It was yeah, bad. Well, that, that, once again, I think that was a, a thing because he saw the defense's game plan. He was like, okay, I see you've decided yeah. you're going to focus all your attention on Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I, it's... I do believe that he's – well, I, don't, I won't say cured of it, but he's gotten better. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but I think there was a time when – even going back to the Deuce Daly days, when Deuce would be just killing people and all of a sudden – you know, and this is when you have Aaron Brooks, right? <laughs> like, and once again, I'm an Aaron Brooks fan. I've watched Aaron Brooks since he was 16, 15 years old. But you don't want him throwing the ball when you're running the ball like that. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yards. Um, but yeah, I, I, here, I just want to go through a few prospects with you. And I know that, you know, yeah, you said absolutely. we're deep into it. But I'm going to start with, I think probably everybody's number one. I'm assuming everybody's number one overall prospect, Kayvon Thibodeau. I'm going to ask you what you think in terms of where you see him, uh, what kind of player you see, and where do you think he fits at the next level? Well, I mean, I've been watching him. You know, I I watched his high school stuff, like, a lot. Like, he just kept coming across my feed on Twitter. Saw him on – you know, I'm trying to watch film clips on YouTube, and all of a sudden he comes up, and I'm like, who is this guy? 
I mean, oh, you know, I think he's right up there with the top pass rushers we've seen. I mean, I really do. I think you're looking at the Miles Garrett-esque guys. I think, like, I was super, super, super high on Brian Burns, so I'd put him up there with him and Bosa. I mean, I really do think he is a special player. Yep. And, I mean, if the Jaguars get to add him to their roster, man, they're, <laughs> they're setting themselves oh. up well because uh, they got Lawrence at quarterback. They have, uh, you know, a bevy of weapons on offense. I mean, yep. regardless of how this season goes, we can't take anything away from that offensive, uh, you know, those weapons. But, man, getting him would be really beneficial for the future of that football team, I think. Um, but I think, yeah, he's he's the number one player. Uh, I don't know if he'll go number one because quarterback demand is so high and, you know, quarterbacks sure. pretty much always go number one now, but right. he's sure. definitely Even worthy of being no the Miles Garrett out. pick. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I definitely think so. Just that speed and just the power and, and his bend. You know, if you can't bend, I don't, I don't want you as a pass rusher. I'm going to be real. It, it really, it turns me off if you have no bend whatsoever. Um, They're been successful, stiff power rushers. I mean, yeah. Tom he can't bend, you know, I'm 54 years old and I'm more flexible than Tom Bali in his prime. <laughs> but he, he had great hand usage. He was incredibly powerful. And he was, you know, a guy who was very efficient with his footwork. That's he just true. Could, it's, there's more than one way to, to, to be a great pass rusher. Um, yeah, it's, I'm thinking more like number one overall, I would be going for a guy with like, you know, that Brian oh, Burns. Everything. You want a guy that has everything. I want a guy that can run under a table, you know, that, right. that type yeah. of deal. Von Miller, right, those guys, yeah. Yeah. Right, when you're going, I'm, I'm agreeing that if you're picking a guy first of all, he should have everything. Yeah. Like, you should not say, oh, I'll look overlook this. No, if it's, yeah. oh, oh, I want everything or I'm trading down. I've exactly. never heard people trying to excuse something that's missing. Like, well, he's got this, this. Well, yeah, he didn't really produce, but, like, no, one overall, I need everything. I need great testing. I need production. I need great tape. If it's one overall, I want it all, or I'm trading down. Like I'm not, 100%. I'm, not, I'm not taking a guy where there's something not quite there. But yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, I mean, he has Javon Curse type of upside to me. Oh, I like, like that. that. Yeah, kind of, that kind of talent. Um, and I'm not gonna say generational because one, it's a, the words become meaningless. What is uh, generational? When we're talking. Look at all these amazing <laughs> pass rushers. I mean, that's the thing I laugh at. Is like our, I want to say generational because it sounds like it's a buzz thing, right? It sounds good, yeah, but it's well, like no. meaningless. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Well, it's meaningless. It's become meaningless, right? People, look, Randy Moss. That's generational, right? I mean, that's like if you're right, Patrick Mahomes. Like, there's legitimately generational. You know, Do Aaron Donald. I mean, right, Aaron Donald. There's, there's only, but there's only been a handful of those in 30 years. That's what generational means, right? Exactly. Not like, oh yeah, well, it's generational, but we just had one last draft. Like right. that, that was my, that was my issue with Trevor Lawrence is that I think he's no. very good. He was not my number no. one quarterback, by the way. No. And he's not. But, no, he, there's nothing generational about him, though. He's really good, right? Yeah. I mean, He's not even as good as Justin Herbert in my mind. He's not quite Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert I don't was think so. physically. I didn't think Burrow was generational up. either. I thought he was a very, right. very good college quarterback that I had as my number one quarterback in that class, but I didn't think he was generational. And you know, Herbert is actually I kind of fell for like the recency, I think, of it with, with Burrow. <laughs> because looking back, I looked at my notes back when Herbert was a freshman. And it was just holy. Yep. <laughs> it's like right. that just but, I couldn't see, believe how remember, much I loved that it. was a different off. That was a different offense, right? Yeah, exactly. That offense only for his first couple of years, and then in the uh, next in the uh, when, they, when the the coaching staff changed. Um, I mean, it's sort of like the thing people said about Christian Hackenberg, right? Where where their excuse for Christian Hackenberg was the offense was too simple. Remember that one? Complicated offense. Oh, so you're telling me that in a in an offense where he's only reading half the field. And they're running extremely simplified route concepts, and he can't. Oh, man. You're saying that when he's reading the whole field, and the concepts are way more complex, he's going to soar like a bird. Is that what you're telling me? Do you know what uh, I had Christian Hackenberg as undrafted? I did not. I did not have a draft. I could not justify spending a pick on him. I, I mean, do you I, realize that he even in high school he had like a one, two, five to one touchdown interception ratio? He's never been accurate. Like, I don't understand how people think you're going to get more accurate. If you're inaccurate in high school and you're inaccurate in college, in the NFL, now you're going to be accurate. Come yeah, on. Yeah, like, 
it's just magically gonna click like like that and they're just like well and then i hate i hate when people say like and i've heard this patrick mahomes it just clicked for him like were you watching him go up one-on-one versus baker mayfield in college i mean are you serious right now are you serious like first of all he's always been that dude right his high school tape, he's that dude. His college tape, he's that dude. Oh, like, my God. Did he get better? Yeah, he got better, but he, he was awesome. He's always been awesome. Also, the because uh, I am I may, I don't know where you are on this. I've always been a baptism by fire person when it comes to quarterbacks drafted in the first round. I think you throw <laughs> him in the fire unless you have a Brett Favre, a Tom Brady, somebody like that. So, in other words, Justin Fields, I'd be starting you over Andy Dalton. I'd be starting oh, yeah, yeah. Trey Lance. I'd be starting Trevor Lawrence. I'd be starting Zach Wilson, all that, what have you. Um, my thing with Patrick Mahomes, when people bring up, well, this is why it works. Patrick Mahomes could have started that season. This idea clear that, that he could have Alex started. Smith <laughs> made him what he was. It got him comfortable because they're taking it off a week 17 game against Denver's defense. And you're like, yeah, you know, he just wasn't ready yet. And you could see, I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no. What happened was well, they were being nice to Alex Smith. They were going to let him finish the season. But this was basically like, hey, Alex, we're done with you. We're just, we're going to give you this last hurrah, but Pat is our guy moving forward. That's all it was. Fair, and to be fair, Alex Smith is the kind of guy that sat with him and worked with him and yes. said, here's here. Like, he was a really good mentor, and he did help Patrick. Like, that's that that's yeah, not a course thing. But was Patrick Mahomes ready to play in the NFL? It was 19, probably. By yeah. the time he was 20, definitely. Um, I mean, one, what are we talking about? But it's not, for me, it's not a, a one size fits all thing. There are some guys who are ready and some guys who aren't. Here's what I have to remind myself when a guy is, Russell Wilson's a freak, right? Some guys are, are oh. ready because they're a freak of nature. They're not, they're not normal. This is not the norm. Lots of quarterbacks weren't ready and we saw that they weren't ready and they got thrown out there anyway right i mean was mark sanchez ready no no uh, i did not like him as a prospect either well i liked him probably a little more than you but i knew he wasn't ready like he, he was a guy that needed to be brought along slowly and i know people don't like to hear this because we're in this immediate gratification cycle now of things where everybody wants to get <laughs> yeah. but look how long it took guys i mean it took steve young a long time it took Tom, uh, not Tom Brady, sorry, Terry Bradshaw, a long time. I remember this because I got to see 1971 Terry Bradshaw. And he was terrible. I mean, Boy, he, man. it took a lot of guys a while for it to happen. Yeah. So I threw him right out there, right? And got beaten half to death. Um, but luckily, he's a tough guy and he survived it. But not everybody's that tough. It ruined David Carr. Like some guys get ruined by that process of just being beat. I mean, David Carr got sacked 68 times his first, his rookie year, and then 59, I think, his second year in the league, and then 63, his third year in the league. And by then, he was ruined. I mean, if, if, if once you've lost your confidence and your ability to not be seeing, I mean, he woke up screaming at night, I'm sure, by, by halfway through his second year in the league, he was having nightmares. You can ruin a young quarterback by throwing him into a bad situation. It depends on the situation. Now, Patrick Mahomes was not going into a bad situation. That was a really good football team. Yeah, no, of course. So I'm agreeing that it would have worked for him. If you throw some of these young quarterbacks into these terrible situations, they're going to get physically and mentally damaged, what my 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 good friend Ben Albright calls shaken QB syndrome, right? <clears throat> um, you can destroy a guy. So it depends on the situation. Um, some guys are ready to go. Not all of them. Joe Burrow, clearly ready to go. Some guys are obviously ready to go. They almost destroyed – I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. The the L.A. Rams in 2016 almost killed Jared Goff. I mean, yes, almost Brent literally. Robinson yes. was his left tackle. People, yes. people completely forget about that. And then for whatever oh. reason, the Browns thought it was okay to start him, which was just – I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but, I mean, that was a yes. real thing. And, like, I was a yes. Wentz guy in the draft, but I was like, well – Carson Wentz is in a way better situation than Jared Goff right now. It's, you really can't compare the two. Um, and then, of course, you know, Goff got McVay and, you know, got Whitworth. He's got better. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, he just got – and then, I mean, let's call it like it is. The the tight end coach coming over from wherever he was, uh, Rob Boris being the offensive uh, coordinator. 
I mean, I remember at one point he's like, I don't even know what to do anymore. Like he said that <laughs> on all or nothing. And I'm sitting there like, he didn't just say that. I mean, I've already watched this season. I already went through the pain. And somehow <laughs> that was the most painful moment of it all is when I right. hear my offensive coordinator, who's already been fired, by the way. We've already hired Sean McVay at this point, And I'm watching all or nothing. I'm sitting there. And it's like Rob Boris is saying, I don't even know what to do anymore. Like, wh- <laughs> what do you mean? That's not good. That's not reassuring. Like, what are you talking about? So no, it, it, it's yeah. clear to me, once again, that I don't want to get too deep into how the NFL evaluates coaches because that's another yeah. show. <laughs> but, we, but it's clear that, once again, there's flavors of the week, month, year, whatever, and a lot of good coaches get passed over for a guy who just fits whatever the new trend is. It happens. It happens way too often, and it ha- it'll hap- it's happening now, and then it'll change. It'll be a new trend. It'll be happening then, but – uh, let me let me knock off a few more players before I forget. Uh, since we've got players to discuss, yeah. uh, so obviously everyone had Derek Stingley Jr. as their number one corner coming into the year. He hasn't had the domination level year that maybe people were expecting, but I think he's still everybody's number one corner. When you looked at him, what did you think? Um, I just yeah, I, to me, I think he's still the number one corner. You know. I understand, you know, some guys leave. It's like, how good is he really? I think he's, he fits the role. You know, he fits the bill. He is a top five corner, uh, like a top five player in this draft at corner, uh, which I love. You know, I like that. I I see at least what I've noticed. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, this is potentially a really interesting top five where you're looking at a pass rusher in the top five in, yep. um, you know, our guy that we were just talking about. Thibodeau. Uh, yep. Thibodeau. And then you have, I, I don't think there's a quarterback in the top five, um, but you have, in my opinion, you know, I look at Evan Neal. So you have a, a tackle, in my opinion, in yep. there. And then sure. I have uh, Stingley and then I have two safeties, which is really interesting because yes. I'm very, right. very high on Kyle Hamilton uh, from Notre Dame and Brandon Joseph from Northwestern. Oh, um, you're Brandon Joseph. Okay. Yeah, I, I like both of them. I mean, again, I haven't gotten into it like fully, you know, full deep dive just from what I've oh, seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I understand. But it, yeah, I, I, I love Joseph. Cool. This is like a I, 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 type of class that we've seen, you know, last three years, I'll say. So I'm a Brandon Joseph fan, and I, I got to see him in person against uh, Michigan State, which was not a good day for him. But it was a bad day for the defense of Northwestern all the way around. Uh, but, I, you know, it's one game. I don't want to overreact. I'll tell you who's been shooting up my safety rankings is Jaquan Brisker at Penn State. He's uh, third for me. Right. I think he's got a shot to, to, to make some noise in terms of that. I mean, he's right now in my top 20. So I have three safeties in my top 20, uh, which I don't think – Safety ever- class. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, safety was the position I played when I played. So I want to be very clear that I do – I'm a safety guy. Okay. I, I'm, in interest of disclosure, I'm a safety guy. I, I, I watch safeties probably more than anyone else you've ever met in, my, in your life. Uh, it is my favorite position to evaluate. But I tend to try to be realistic. Uh, I've never had three – I've been doing this since before you were born. Uh, my first draft article was published in 1982. Uh, so – but I've never had three safeties in my top 20. And I've been doing this a very, very long time. Wow. I back and looked just to make sure. Never. I've had two. Um, and a couple of times, actually. A couple of times I've had two in the top 20. But I've never had three. So this is, as you said, an unusual year. I'm going to go through some other guys that I've started to like, and you tell me where you are on them. Uh, now, this is my OT1 right now. And I, I like Neil too, but I think he's a little more refined. Sean Ryan at UCLA. Have you had a chance to check him out yet? I have not. So I'll have to add him. I'm going to add him right because I started a watch list uh, just for our show. And uh, <laughs> guys that you mentioned, I'm putting right on that watch list. And yeah. uh, we'll see if I can get ahead of the uh, the curve like nor- well, like I normally am not. <laughs> we'll see if. Right. Uh, so it's uh, well, Sean Ryan from UCLA. Yep. Yeah, and it's Ryan R. H Y A N. Um, so just to make it interesting, but here's what I, what I watched when I watched him. I watched the LSU game a couple of times. Uh, here's what I noticed. Um, he could, he showed the ability to jump set. He showed the ability to redirect. He showed the ability to just steer guys around the horn and take them out, out of the play. 
He was good against guys who countered back inside. He cut off spin moves. Like, he showed me the full everything. He's not the powerhouse that Neil is, but then who, who else is amongst the tackles in this class? Probably nobody. But he was so – showed me so much more variety. When I see Neil – and once again, maybe he just hasn't had the chance to show me that full repertoire yet. I see a guy just bullying people. <laughs> That's what I see. No, I have, that makes sense. I haven't seen him handle all these different pass rush moves. Um, and unfortunately, Thibodeau got hurt in that game. So he only went up against Thibodeau about two series, I believe. So probably about six, seven snaps. But he was – I mean – Thibodeau was getting some work done. Don't get me wrong. But he also handled him a couple. Like, it was one of those things where was, I was looking forward to watching that all day long. And unfortunately, Thibodeau not hurt. Uh, Thibodeau beat him flat out, just flat out beat him bad a couple of times. Uh, and then they moved Thibodeau, you know, to the other side. <laughs> um, but, they, but, but also, you know, Ryan got him a couple of times. It, but I, I was really looking forward to seeing that all day long. And like I said, unfortunately, the injury kept that from happening. Uh, another guy that everybody's all hot and sweaty about is Adam Anderson at Georgia. Uh, along with, you know, obviously his teammate, the interior line, we'll talk about uh, also, who's, I guess, everybody's number one tackle. But I want to spend some time on Anderson because, and this is probably an unpopular opinion, I think he ends up being drafted ahead of Jordan Davis. But, you know, we'll see how, how, how it all plays out. I could look like an idiot when this is all said and done. But have you had a chance to check uh, the Georgia guys out yet? I have not. Um, I don't have either in my top five or whatever, but I haven't watched, like, 30 guys been able to really rank right. them. It's guys that are got it. Peaking my interest, watching the games, all of that. Uh, you know, through tackles, I would say I like uh Kirkland from uh Jackson Washington. Yep. Yep. Um I do like Washington tackles, so maybe I'm a sucker for that. Um <laughs> I, I hope he gets a little stronger. That's my only note on him is you know, he doesn't he's not super great at anchoring. You know, if somebody just decides to come straight at him and they're powerful, he can struggle. But yeah, he's got the other stuff I look for. I would say this is a guy I like a lot, and probably a lot of people don't like him because he's just such a different type of tackle. We're talking about a guy that is a mammoth. I mean, he's literally like placing a mammoth at tackle, do your thing. <laughs> you already know where I'm going with this. Uh yeah, Daniel yeah. uh Falele from yes. uh Minnesota. I just I've never seen anything like him, but I I well, think he's he can translate. Okay, like I I do yeah. feel this way. I feel like he can translate. Um, it's gonna be tough because he's like three seventy three eighty, but you know in six <laughs> six eight. Uh, yeah, he's a giant. He's a literal I, giant. He's a <laughs> I, I'm very intrigued, and to be honest with you. I would probably draft him. I don't know where I would draft him. I don't know where he's going to go. That's the thing. That's a really fascinating question. Project. Testing his physical testing would be everything for him yeah. because if you test like a you know like a literal you know iceberg, then it's going to be hard because yeah. it means he can only play right tackle, and there's only a certain amount of attraction for that. The guys that I thought of when I watched him were Dan Skipper. Remember Dan Skipper from Arkansas? Yeah, it was like six ten. Yeah. Well, right. Well, he six nine, but yeah, he he was. Oh yeah. This, yeah. He turned out to be like six nine and three eights, which is fine, you know. Um, yeah, I remember him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and once again, it's can he can he move can he move well enough? That was Dan Skipper's issue. Um, Dan Skipper's three cone is still being run, you know. So that was the issue: is that change direction when you get over when you get over a certain size, you know, can oh, you hit Claude Miller? Right, that's a problem at some point when you're that certain size. Like, oh, yeah. oh come back here, right? You know. <laughs> That's not fair. Oh, too fast. Oh, I'll get it next time, right? That when you that that is the problem is that guys aren't going to come straight at you anymore, right? These guys yeah. have because they, and then I, first of all, why are you going straight at a guy that size? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Um, Never why, understood that. That plan of attack is just it does not work. It's laughable, and it makes me just assume that. Your uh, decision making is not very good. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Either you are poorly coached or right, or you have terrible decision making skills. There's no reason to, to take on all of that man. You should be trying to take on not even half of him, try to go like an eighth of him. I'll take if all the false steps in the world over you running right into a brick wall. I'll just, I'll take, right. I'll say that. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's no, uh, but yeah. So, and of course, even, even Zeus Jr., right? A little bit of, of that too, like that just so massive. But you always wonder, because 
even with Orlando Brown Jr., like he's right on the borderline of almost being too slow. Like he's right, he's just quick yeah. enough. He has just enough. Like if he he's one lower body injury away from being not able to handle pass rushers, right? But but once he gets his hands on you, like you you know that's it. Like there's no more. Well, what was the prep- second rounder from Ole Miss that the Panthers drafted? He was really slow, right? Like he tested oh. horribly. Yeah, there's I a totally few guys. Heard- Forgot about him. Greg something, I think. Yeah, hold on. Oh, uh, I don't think you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, another that type of guy where right, you're like eh, he might be too slow, and he still got drafted in the second round. And everyone de- was like, it depends. What? It depends on it depends on what you want to do with him, right? I mean, so if you're a team that wants to lean on people, right, <laughs> and you, there's only a few teams that really like to do that nowadays, right? Most teams are just trying to throw the ball, uh, but the Ravens. Right, they still want to lead on people. There's not many teams left like that. So the Ravens are a good fit for a guy like your friend Dan Alfaele. Like they just, I mean, imagine how he. They may have to kick him inside though, even for the. I mean, we'll see. But he's enormous. I mean, he's yeah, the biggest. He may be the biggest player I've ever evaluated. Uh, actually, <laughs> he's <laughs> an actual giant. <laughs> I love it, but I just don't know. And he's a senior, right? I he's either a redshirt junior. Or, well, I mean. It depends, right? Because he's a double redshirt junior or whatever. It's so confusing. Like it's yeah, yeah. The worst part of my year getting ready for this is trying to figure out how to list players <laughs> because some teams just men in black last year, like boop. like they believe it. They just actually didn't exist. They literally would just they just whatever the guy was last year just rolled it over. If he was a sophomore, oh my I'm god, I'm not joking. Look it up. So some schools just pretend it didn't happen, right? <laughs> some schools will slap on a red shirt. So, but they'll do it twice. So there's a lot of double red shirt guys out there, right? So he's a double red shirt senior, right? So these super, super seniors, right? There's a few of those, more than a few actually. Um, in fact, one of my favorite linebackers is one of those guys. He's a sixth year senior named Justin Rice. If you haven't watched him, I urge you to watch him. So he started his career uh, at Fresno State and made all conference there. Then he went to Arkansas State, made all conference there. And then when Blake Anderson left and went to Utah State, he's going to make all conference. There. I don't know if anyone's ever been all conference at three different schools before. I have to hit, hit the Elias Sports Bureau. But um, he's a terrific. He's smart, obviously. He's played a gazillion snaps of football. So <laughs> you're not going to fool Justin Rice. Um, he's a slightly better athlete than people give him. The people who don't like older players will obviously like write him off because he's 23 going on 24. Turn 24 before the season's over, I believe. Oh, that's nothing for me. Yeah, some people, like, that's it. Like, they, they'll take a guy off the board if he's over a certain age. So Maybe a running back, but I wouldn't even do that <laughs> since Najee Harris. I, I, you know, he was my number one. I, I would have drafted him, you know? Yep. I mean, I guess I understand. But, uh, I mean, then again, Brandon Whedon, to me, was too old, you know, to get drafted. In the <laughs> right, there is eventually a point where it is you a know. returns, right? Yeah, yeah. with you. And my issue with Brandon Wynn wasn't just that he was old. It was, once again, the things that he was good at were th- things that you don't really do at the NFL level. Yeah, um, that offense, I don't think, translated at all. I, I don't think it, it well, was going to translate. It, it's Well, the funny thing is that there are people moving closer to it now. So uh, yeah. there's, there's teams who are installing, you know, I mean, even, even, even Tampa Bay has, I mean, everybody's incorporating a certain amount of, you know, air raid principles into their offense. Pretty much everybody. I mean, once again, maybe not so much the Ravens. Uh, Greg, Greg Roman has a, a slightly different deal. He's working. But but if you look at what most offenses, they now have a lot of those quote-unquote collegiate elements have been worked in. Um, Graham Harrell's probably pissed. Like, come on, guys. You, you couldn't have had this when I was in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> right. A lot of guys. Timmy Chang. There's a long list of dudes. We're oh, like, oh, born too early. Um. I'm going to hit, hit you with a couple more guys. Yeah. Uh, so we, we mentioned, obviously, both Alabi and Wilson. So we're going to talk about those two, and then I'm going to throw in two more guys uh, that I love, John Dotson and, and Drake London. But let's go with the first, the, the Ohio State tandem first. Uh, compare and contrast them. What do you like? Why? All that good stuff. Well, I like that Alave stayed in school. I wasn't expecting him to stay in school. Uh, felt Nobody like he would have Well, yeah, I felt, felt like he was a first-round pick. Um, you know, I like his ability just he can go up and get the football, you know. Um, now, one guy that he's actually not my number one receiver, though. I actually like John Mechie the third. And now people will say because I like Bama. 
But I just, man, I watched last year's film and just constantly was in love, like absolutely in love with Jalen Waddle. But a guy just right. kept standing out on the other side, and I was always Mechie. Mechie was yep. coming through. Mechie had yep. to come through. You know, they dealt with a lot of injuries uh, with all sorts of receivers, especially Waddle. Um, big yep. big issue with Waddle is his health. I mean, you look yep. at the, the ankle he had. I mean, clearly he was not healthy in, in the championship game. He was not 100%. No, um, that was a guts thing. I mean, yeah. one thing about those Saban kids, they don't <laughs> Courage. They played through. I used to joke that uh, you couldn't play defense for Nick Saban until you tore your um, your labrum. Uh, but <laughs> they, I what? Just watch the combine medicals. I mean, every year it's like, oh, turns out so and so has a torn labrum. You know? Oh my god! <laughs> it's <laughs> and you know it, it was it was annoying because on Twitter, you know, people are like, oh, Nick Saban should feel horrible about himself to force him to play out there. I'm like, it's the national championship game. Jalen Waddle is going out there. Begging. But Waddle was begging to play. Yes. Waddle was begging to play. Nobody forced him. That kid was begging to play. And and then there's people that dock him points for that. I'm like, are you kidding me? Toughness? Check. Like, Check. Right. <laughs> he was my number one receiver last year. I had uh, Jamar. You liked him more than I, I liked him. I didn't like him that much. Oh, I yeah. I, I kind of – you know how OBJ kind of came in the league and took the league by storm? You know, his rookie you were, year. You were thinking that was what was going to happen with him? I was feeling that is like the – and I'm not saying that was what would happen. But I was right. feeling that was like his upside where he could be like that type of player. It was hmm. not how great of a route runner it was. He, it was not how the fact he didn't care if he got into a car accident going up <laughs> and getting the football and just putting himself in harm's way. You know exactly the throw I'm talking about. Over the middle, just – yeah, I like that. I like the fearlessness. Yeah. Yeah. From 189 or whatever pounder he was. Yeah. It wasn't even just that though. It was when he has the ball in the open field, he's like OBJ. I mean, he is so explosive and his vision, it's yeah. just yeah. he's really gone at that point. When there's enough grass in front of him and the next guy, well, you know yeah. he's gonna make a safety or a corner or a linebacker miss. That's the thing I love about him. Plus his returnability. I just think. There's so yeah. much to him. I was just like, he's my favorite receiver. And I really, really like Jamar Chase. And I swear to you, even though I like Kansas, I don't hold any grief against him de decommitting from Kansas at all. I gave him my number two. He was ahead of another Alabama receiver I loved watching in uh, Devontae Smith. Yep. Uh, but I'm going to be real with you. I think Waddle, to me, has the highest ceiling. And I actually have Chase in my fantasy projections. I have Chase as a top 10 receiver this year. And oh, wow. I had Waddle wow. down the peg. I had Waddle yeah. way down. Because yeah. Waddle's sharing time with Albert Wilson emerged in uh, camp. He hasn't really done anything. you know. But I right. think the problem is, what is Miami's offense? And how can he even run their offense? Because two is not healthy. Uh, right. Jacoby Brissett, as much as I like the guy, has not been the same since he suffered that knee injury in Pittsburgh. And, right. they're, you know, they're just kind of in limbo right now. It's really unfortunate in, because yeah. I think Brian Flores really can coach this team to success. Oh, I think he can get them to, you know, that that big, you know, that next level. But it, it, there's so much uncertainty. I'm At this point, yeah. I'm just hoping they trade for Deshaun Watson, for Jalen <laughs> Waddle's sake, for Devontae Parker's sake, for Preston. You know, they have a lot of guys that I really like. They have a lot of guys. College, so, you they know. have a lot of guys, yeah. They have a lot of guys. There's a lot of mouths to feed. A uh, lot of mouths to feed, including Gasicki I, I, and oh man, there's so many. Yeah, I, I I do I like Waddle. I thought Waddle. I won't say one trick pony because that that's dismissive. He's more than one trick pony, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel he was as refined as either Chase or or Smith. Um, so I had those two ahead of him. And once again, a lot of people knocked Devontae Smith for his build, but he wasn't weak, right? I mean, like yeah. I saw him fight dudes for the ball and win. Every time, <laughs> you know, like it wasn't like he did it occasionally. He was not to make any sense point. either. I mean, he was like, you know, you look at two, two at well as well. It was weird. Those guys, the way they're built, they're like these, these toothpick thing guys, but like Atwell does not get enough credit for his toughness going up and trying sure. to get the football. I mean, I'll say this. I think Blackman was really good the year prior, but his past mm -hmm. year, he was not very good. And Atwell right. had to adjust to the underthrown ball and then you look at, like you said, Devontae Smith, Not, you know, he's not afraid. He's not afraid to clank his helmet with another guy in order to try and get the ball up in the air. You know, a jump ball there, 
Um, and he won, you know, every yeah, exactly. time. It wasn't like yeah. he won occasionally. He was winning every time. I hated ranking these guys, Bill. I'll tell you because you know I like those three that we just talked about, and then you right. have Rashad Bateman over here, and then you have a guy who I think I was saying he's more of a a more physical version of Tyler Lockett. I'm not saying he will be. Um, that was the guy over in Oklahoma State, um, oh, Tylen uh, Wallace. Tylen Wallace, Wallace yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Tyler him. Wallace fan. So, yes, I love hearing people talk about him. Please continue. I mean, he, he's is he not like a physical Tyler Lockett coming out of Kansas State? I mean, he or, really or 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 faster Doug Baldwin. I mean, there's a bunch of well, Seattle. All right. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, but I, yeah, he's a, <laughs> we, Doug Baldwin's mentioned twice on this. We deserve some ad revenue. <laughs> Doug Baldwin is always better than people gave credit for being Deion Absolutely. Sanders. Absolutely. People gave credit for <laughs> I'm a Rams fan. I don't even like the Seahawks, but man, I'm going to call it like it is. He's a good player. I hate that he had to retire. I, I was, yeah. I was sad that day when I found out he had to retire because of injury. Yep. Can you imagine? I mean, it wouldn't help my team any. Could you imagine him right now with Lockett and Metcalf? And then oh, the oh, by outside the way, and him Wayne the Estridge as your fourth receiver. Good luck. Good God. luck. How are you stopping that? That's How not, are you stopping yeah. that? Thank God they don't have any tight ends anymore. They're, <laughs> they've completely forgotten how to evaluate that position. Jeez. Give I me a call. Like, I like Everett help. there. I like Everett there, but I, I agree with you. I But I like him too, but he should be a backup tight end, not a starting tight end. He's well, a really – That I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I like him too. I liked him even back in South Alabama. He was – I think my tight end six that year. Don't quote me, but I'd have to go back. And, I'm not going to lie. I like Jalen Tolbert more out of South Alabama than I like. In right, the but well, they don't, they're different players. One's a tight yeah, end. Yeah, no, no, I know. But it's funny because South Alabama, we don't really talk too much about guys coming from that school. And you, you yeah. know, first thing I think of South Alabama, I'm like, oh, Gerald Everett. But Jalen <laughs> Tolbert, man, if he goes to the second round, I won't be shocked. I won't be shocked either. It comes down to, once again, testing. Um, there's so many good wide receivers in this draft. Romeo Dobbs is a guy I'm in love with. Um, yeah, I'm big on Tolbert. I, I, I love Jahan Dotson. I, I'm huge I like on Dotson a lot. Wilson, but not as much as everyone else. And I don't know if it's me or them. I have to keep watching him. People are so much higher on him than I am. And I'm wondering if it's me. Maybe it's something you wrong. You mentioned with uh, Drake London as well. I like him. Oh, Drake London. Oh, my God. Maybe I, you people know, will stop with the, the Trojan logo on the helmet. Stop scouting the helmet. <laughs> like maybe finally, maybe Juju Smith Schuster and, and Michael Pittman but, and. Yeah, maybe we'll just stop Woods? doing that. I mean, come on. There's been a lot of Woods. I mean, there's a bunch of USC wide receivers in the Hall of Fame, people. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, mean, I understand like, you got burned by Mike Williams and Dwayne Jarrett, but that was like so long ago. Like, stop. But also, they're such different. Those are both giant, slow receivers. These yeah. are not guys. Exactly. London, he's not slow. He's – I called him – once again, I want to make it clear. When I called him a slower – in fact, my actual description was – now, you're too young to even know what this is a reference to because I guess you've never actually owned records. But I called him – uh, I own records. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, this, it won't be lost on you. I actually called him um, uh, Mike Evans at 33 and a third, right? So <laughs> <laughs> um, he's not slow, but he's not as fast as Mike Evans. But, yeah. I mean, he's – but everything else, right? The body control. The, I mean, once again, the strong basketball background. They both were hoopers. Um, I mean, he was – what seventh man off the bench? I think in his days, it is is basketball days at USC. That's a legitimate program. They made it to the what round of eight or something uh, a couple of years ago. So once again, also toughness, right? He will go wherever the ball goes with apparently no, despite the basketball thing, not soft. Um, I, I think he has a chance to have as good a career, even though I don't think he's going to go as early as some of the guys we talked about. He has a chance to be as good a career or better than some of the guys we talked about just because if he goes – I do think if he goes the right situation, like, oh, my God, if somehow the Chargers got him with everybody else they already have, right? Oh, dear yeah. God. But think about that, right? Because you have – now you can leave Allen in the slot pretty much all the time. Now you've got – at the Z, you've got Mike Williams. At X, you've got Drake London. And you could just play around with whatever else you've got. And I still think Donald Parham – is going to some, someday emerge as a starter at tight end. Yeah. No, I do too. I like him more than Cook, and everyone thinks I'm crazy. I'm sorry. I watch way too much Jared Cook. I, I don't trust Jared Cook. 
I mean, you, you, you know where I'm going with that, but I do I know you're going Jared Cook. I, I watched my team pay Jared Cook. Uh, right. You know, I watched him for four whatever years. I, I mean, first off, he's older. And he's, secondly, yes. I'm not going to – like because people are saying Chargers made a colossal mistake not bringing back Hunter Henry. I think Hunter Henry's good. I don't think Hunter Henry's great. Hunter no. Henry got great money from the Patriots. And let's be real yes. here. The Patriots were just trolling everyone with the cap. They're like, oh, we'll take that tight end there. We'll take that tight end there. And then, oh, what about us? You don't get any. Sorry. Like, that's right. really what they did. They're like, you know, what? we're just going to, we have the money. We'll just get Johnny Smith and we'll get Hunter Henry and we'll call it a day. They, you know, they have what I call, you know, some places are open 24 hours and you go there at two o'clock in the morning with the munchies. That's what happened with tight ends and, and <laughs> Patriots. They had 2 a.m. tight end munchies. And they just, like, oh, like, oh, hey. <laughs> oh, wait, this one's the chili lime tight end. Ooh, 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 this one's the rubber, the swirl tight end. Like, they were just loading up the cart. Like, well, what's this one? Cool ranch tight end, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, they you can't play all like. of them. They, they drafted Devin Asiasi, who I like, and then I absolutely love Dalton Keene. I think he's going to end up getting cut, if not already. Uh, but I loved Dalton Keene. Uh, he was yes. like a super, super poor man's George Kittle. But yes, very poor. The, but yes, very homeless. poor. But I really did like not only his aggressiveness as a blocker, but he's very he likes to block receiver. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and the biggest he's issue a project. Is Kittle, yeah, yeah, he's a project. The problem is, can they develop him? Because they've got how they whatever, whatever. They'll fi- I hope the he gets a- will figure out a way. <laughs> so whatever. whatever, whatever's conducive to their process, they'll do it. But. It is weird. I liked Ryan Izzo and they threw him away like trash. So I don't know. It's like, I mean, with tight ends, you know, I like Ferkser as well. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't hate that the Titans stuck with Ferkser. Um, yeah. You know, I, to me though, once again, he has to stay healthy, Cook, but he's got to stay healthy. We talked about Hunter Henry, Hunter, 11 games, Henry. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, exactly. right. Because that's, I mean, literally you can pencil him in for 11 games, but you got to figure out what you could do with those other games. Because he's never played a full season. And I don't think it's going to suddenly start happening as he gets older. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Some guys do that. They figure it out, whatever. And then suddenly, they, they, the last part of their career, they stay healthy, right? Fred Taylor yeah. at running. But those guys are the exception, not the rule. Uh, that's, generally, guys don't get healthier in the middle towards the back half of their careers. It happens occasionally. And I yeah. root for I hope I hope I'm wrong. I hope Hunter he proves me wrong. I hope he sends, I hope he takes a picture of, of him giving me the middle finger when he plays all 17 games and sends it to him. I hope I'm wrong. But that's how I am with Deshaun Jackson, so I hear you. Right, right. But <laughs> until I but you know right, until I've proven wrong, I'm not wrong. Until yeah. then, he's 11 games Henry to me. I I mean with the char I feel like the Chargers had a other opportunity. Like they, you know, as soon as Kyle Pitts was drafted. I would have just called him and be like, "Hey, is Hayden Hurst available? Just, just ask. You know, make a call. Right? Is he available? You know, I want to know. Or, you know, the Giants. You know, they go out and they get Kyle Rudolph. Hey, we know you're kind of annoyed with Evan Ingram right now. You know, very annoyed with Evan Ingram. Very okay. Very, very annoyed. How about (laughs) this? Uh, We'll take him off your hands. Like, what? Do we have a do? Do we have a deal here? And like that would have been interesting. Maybe they they go a different direction there. Um, I yeah. personally, I think Arizona should go out and they should get OJ Howard. I'm, I just keep saying this. I mean, I'm going to keep saying it. Well, it'll help their run game. First of all, he's a very good blocker. He is. He, it's like everyone just assumes he is a receiver, but I honestly, I think he'd be good mm-hmm. for them. Um, and I'm not a big Max Williams fan. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm just, well, not. okay. So I'm, double X, right? So here's my thing. I'm double. X. He's, he's. The reason that the Ravens fell out of love is he didn't help them in the run game, right? He wasn't a yeah. great player, and they need that, and he didn't give it. Um, and is he a dangerous down the field receiver? Not really, right? So, so when you're not a dangerous down the field receiver, right? You're not, you not really you're block. Not, you're not, right? You can't really block. <laughs> what are what are you doing? Just existing there, my guy? Like wearing the jersey? Be like, oh well, yeah, you know. I'm just here so I could get a uh, the jersey swap at the end of the game with hopefully Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that was my issue, he, and he, they he let Dan possession. Arnold go. I like right. Dan Arnold, man. Now, that was the right. That's the whole thing. If you're letting ris- tight ends go, that was the see the like that was the guy you should hold on to, right? Yeah, I, double X, double X backs. 
Um, who is a medium speed, small tight end who doesn't really block, right? That's the package you're buying when you're buying that. Once again, he feels like a backup to me. Like, that's, like yeah, exactly. Gerald Everett. It, Gerald Everett's the same thing, but fast. Like, <laughs> selling me on a slower Gerald Everett? That's what you're going to give me? <laughs> it's, it, well, and the thing that's funny is then you turn around and people were dogging on the Ravens for going out and getting Josh Oliver because we can't give Josh Oliver a chance. It's like, Josh Oliver's the third tight end on that team right now. That's the yep. difference. Like, he'd be better in Arizona than Max Williams. I mean, yes. I, I there are guys – that's what I don't understand about the tight end position because you'll get, you'll get guys that are constantly going out there and, and balling, you know, and they don't get the respect. Like, Cameron Brait was really good even with Winston, and no one gave him the time of day. They never put him in that category. He was just the guy, you know, week eight, you decide, oh, I'm going to make a waiver claim for Cameron Brait. You should have picked him up earlier, you know? Um, but you know, then there are guys like Eric Ebron who will continue getting the jobs because they have like the super athleticism and everything. It's upsetting. Cause I really did like him and I was hoping that he found his stride with the Colts, but that was just kind of one of those. It just happened Lightning happen. in the bottle, lightning yeah. in the bottle. So here's the thing about Eric Ebron. And once again, I used to live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I, I, I have a soft I spot sense your pain there, <laughs> right? I have a soft spot for, for, for Tar Heels anyway, but it, <sighs> Inconsistency, thy name is Ebron, right? I mean, that is like his middle name literally ought to be inconsistent because that describes everything about him. It describes his blocking, it describes his route running, it describes his hands, it describes his effort with the ball in his hands once he's caught it. It's all inconsistent. There's no part of his game other than inconsistency that is consistent, right? He might go out and play like a top five tight end for a couple of weeks. And then he might be a guy that you're like, wait. Why are we putting him out there? Right? There's and it just goes. It comes and goes, seemingly without rhyme or reason. Like against a good defense, he'll go off. Like, wow, six, six catches, 86 yards, two touchdowns. It's a good defense. Then against a team that just flat out blows, like there's nothing doing. Like the linebackers are small and slow. He'll get you two and 19. And drop and four drops, right? Oh, <laughs> it's like no. what? It's like what? what's happening? Why, why, what? Are you mad at me? You know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's, I know it's hard to be good all the time, right? That's why the greats are the great, right? The guys that keep, you get the same greatness out of all the time are great. Like, they're different. They're not like everybody else. That's what makes them great. Not everybody is going to be a Kelsey. Not everybody's going to be a Kittle. Not every, and, you know, the guys that I'm, I'm sort of putting on that, not on that pedestal yet, but headed in the right direction. Waller, I guess, is right in that, that area as well. And there's guys who are pointed in that direction. Uh, like but Hawkinson. I, yeah, right, right. I mean, Hawks, right. You know, he's not, he's breathing down those guys' necks. He's just, yeah, he's going to catch, he's going to catch it's it up. It's all in the, the long hair trend that is back with the tight ends. You notice that? Right. Now, word, word got to him. That, locks. Right. Word got to him that, hey, you want to, you want to, you want to, you know, get <laughs> to that next level, get the lettuce flowing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think Noah Fant, if he could ever get, once again, another guy who's battled injuries a little bit. But if he can get healthy and stay healthy, I think Noah Fant's going to make a move towards that area where Hawkinson is, you know, at the same level because he's young. Yeah. He, he gives decent effort as a blocker. I mean, he's, he's not a killer, but he's a good enough blocker. Um, obviously, you know, coached up, same way, right? We got to see them literally play together for a couple of years, so we have a pretty good sense of what both guys are like. Um, I think Fant – only thing holding him back is health. And for a while, obviously, you know, they had some scattershot quarterback performances. But now it looks like they finally found themselves a nice little smooth, you know, quarterback situation. Uh, a guy who likes the middle of the field, unlike the other guy they had before, a guy who should throw to the middle of the field. Right? That's true. Right? That's so, to be awkward for Albert O, by the way. That's oh, an awkward situation. Yeah. You get super, like, you know, you're tight knit with your quarterback from college. You're working together. I mean, it made no sense why the 49ers drafted, uh, you know, C.J. Beathard because he was pretty much the reason George Kittle fell to the fifth round. Yes. <laughs> but, like, that's one of those things where, all right, all right, you know, C.J., it's been real, right? But I do – I feel for that situation with Drew Locke and Albert O. That's uh, – and I'm not even going to try to say his last name. Edward Montebaum. So. Yes. Yeah, just that's yes. not happening. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's the thing about a guy like that. 
once again, he's going to be a great number two tight end for somebody somewhere. Yes. Uh, and maybe he'll end up with Locke, reunited in I don't know, Pittsburgh when we finally move on from Ebron or whatever. Um, <laughs> and then um, free up a lot of cap space. Oh, my God, we've got cap issues in Pittsburgh. Um, but, yes, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for young athletic tight ends and young athletic quarterbacks. So there's going to be interest in those two somewhere. Uh, I just think that when we look at teams, teams in transition, right? So there's teams that we know are good, right? (laughs) And we know they're going to be good at least this year and probably the next year, right? Tampa Bay depends on what happens with their quarterback, but they should be good for a while. Because even without Brady, that's a solid team. There's a few there's a, there's a decent number of quarters who win a lot of games. Maybe not Super Bowls, but win a lot of games with that team. That was my uh, issue that- with the hate that Winston got, by the way. That was my big <laughs> issue here. And it's why it, I know people call Brady the GOAT, but I, I, I'm I glad you brought that up because it's constantly, Brady took this team, man. They didn't even make the playoffs last year to make it. Come on now. Look at the roster. Look loaded. The, roster. the team is loaded. Look, uh, yes, if he you brought, brought, Teddy Br- he you brought dropped- Antonio Brown. Cool, if you drop but, Teddy Bridgewater on that team, they win a lot of football games, Jake. Teddy Bridgewater, they probably win the Super Bowl. I'm not going to lie to they, you. Because, because they he takes better care of the ball than Jameis Winston. Now, I don't know if it would have worked in that risk it, no biscuit offense, but if they let Teddy well, be he's, Teddy. he's risking it more now, right? That's I true. Mean, is he number one or two in adjusted yards per attempt? He had 300 plus against the Jaguars. I mean, to be right, honest, but I mean, with you, not just the numbers, but their corners, how he's but... getting the numbers. He's driving the ball down the field. And now, keep in mind, this last game, which is why I think it was so close, uh, they're without Jerry Judy. So you really yeah. you can just double, you know, Cortland Sutton. Sutton. And, yeah. you know, Tim Patrick's a good receiver. but Very good. You, you know, but he you shouldn't double, be. Yeah. Well, exactly. So you, say you, you double, uh, you know, Cortland Sutton and then yeah. – you know, say Tim Patrick is having a hard time getting open in his one-on-one matchup. Now you're down to Hamler. Now you're down to Kendall Hinton, who was, you know, getting some. I don't. <laughs> I'll say this: I do not hey, like that they traded. No Fanta, baby. That's no Fanta. Well, yeah, he, absolutely. He should be a matchup nightmare. Yeah, I don't like that they traded Trini Benson though. I think that was a mistake. They found this guy. He he yep. emerged in in camp. He emerged in preseason and was beasting. I I don't know why they traded him the Lions. The Lions feel great right now. They're on top of the moon right now because Tyrell Williams got hurt once again. And now Trinity Benson is turning into (laughs) Tyrell Williams got hurt. It's it's sad because this guy, when he's healthy, I mean, he's so talented. He's a very talented, you know, he tracks the ball really well. He's a really, yes, exactly. Exactly. That was the biggest take on him, in my opinion. You know, he's automatic if you can get it to him deep down the field. Automatic. Right. He's one of the – he's a top five or six deep ball receiver in all of football. Yeah. The he's never healthy. healthy. Health never healthy, right. He's – I mean, I, you take – I think his Galladay record is 13 right. games. Yeah, if you if you cut Galladay in half, that would be Tyrell Williams. And Galladay gets hurt all the time. Right. Also, right. That's the, that's the only thing wrong – I mean, that's a big – that's a <laughs> – obviously, that's a big only thing to have wrong. Yeah. It's like – well, other than that, Mrs. Kennedy, how was your trip to Dallas? Well, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, <laughs> play, um, it's it's hard to overlook that when a guy just can't stay on the field. No, um, you're, you're absolutely right. Okay. Um, last few minutes, I want to go back to, to talking uh, players, yeah. uh, prospects. Uh, so we mentioned Cincinnati guys. Have you talked – have you looked at Ahmad Gardner, who I think has a chance to go in the yes. middle of the – yeah, he's okay. he's my second favorite corner. I uh, mentioned him a little bit earlier. Um, I love him. And depending on how Stingley <laughs> finishes the season, uh, I am that risky. You know, Woo! it's not about being like having a hot take to have a hot take. I no, can't stress right. that enough. If I, I feel see. like I'm more comfortable with a player and their upside and everything, <clears throat> I'm going to move a guy up. And, uh, and that happens, you know, I, a while back, um, I had a quarterback who I believe is like, if, if you gave him an opportunity to start in this league, he would win you football games. Kyle Sloter. Do you remember him? That's my guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like that's that's a friend of mine, but, uh, 
we, he's number five so, on my board the year he came out of. So, so I always kind of liked you, Jake, but now, <laughs> now, okay, we got to look. This is like, okay, you're like, we're almost like distant cousins now, right? This I felt is, that. The way you react. <laughs> I have, I cannot tell you how many people. So, once again, I'm apologizing to people that run various all star games. Because I bothered everybody about Pius. <laughs> I bothered everybody. I didn't mean I, to change the subject, by the way. I just no, no, had no. I did, but no, you per, per, I, uh, There are certain guys, um, Luis Perez, Kyle Slaughter, um, uh, Philip, uh, PJ. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Philip Walker. Yeah. That all it, the right person gets hurt, and all of a sudden people are like, oh, Oh, where'd he come from? Right? I mean, that's right. I mean, that's all it takes, right? These yeah. guys are one injury away from being eight year starters in the NFL, right? The right person gets hurt, the right situation. 100%. Realize, the reason the NFL is so crazy is because everyone's good, right? There's no, no one sucks. Everyone's great. The only question is do you get a chance? Do you fit the scheme? Can you stay healthy, right? Because there's guys who, who are, working at like, you know, 24 hour fitness who are NFL level talents and they just weren't in the right situation. They were in the wrong camp at the wrong time. They got hurt at the wrong time. I mean, there's so many, I could, I could do an entire series of shows about guys that it was just this close. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, so Dang. things like Kyle Slaughter, right. Stays in the, hangs in there unafraid, right. In that quote unquote muddy pocket, conflicted pocket, whatever term you like to throw around nowadays. Staring um, down the barrel of a shotgun. Right, right. Well, we'll the, right. Pre- pressure, whatever term you want to use, hangs in there, delivers the ball on time, do- isn't afraid of getting hit. Is he an athlete? I mean, he's athletic-ish, right? I mean, he can scramble around. He's a can- receiver, yeah. Right, right. I mean, right. So he can move around. He can make plays with his feet. I mean, he's not a guy that – he's not Lamar or something, but he no, can scramble no. Well, closer to like Tannehill level stuff, right? Yeah, but- I think he said he ran – he told me he ran like a, a four – Four, five, four, six around that in between yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's really but good. Tannehill esque, right? Tannehill was a yeah. low four six. Um, yeah. you know, so in that, in that, once again, he can make plays with his feet. He's not, you know, like I say, he's not a running quarterback. He can make plays with his feet. He can deliver the ball on time, on target. He's not afraid to throw the ball deep outside the numbers, even to, and once again, throw a guy open, he can do it. Yes, yes, like everywhere. Yeah. I'm, I thought the Vikings were idiots. Frankly, when they let him go, it's like what they do you- were stupid. They were so <laughs> stupid, and uh, I thought Denver was stupid too. To be honest with you, yes. yes. I, I mean, Trevor Simeon didn't do anything that Kyle Sloter couldn't have done, and you know, <laughs> the, Kyle Sloter had a really weird. I, you probably know this, obviously, um, yep. but him coming out of college. First off, he was at Southern Miss. He he originally was, he right. was going to be the the starter. New co- uh, new coach comes in, basically says, nope, I like Nick Mullins. He's our guy. Play receiver. Right. And so he's like, all right, I'll play receiver. Then he wanted to compete for the starting job again because the coach right. basically told him he was going to go and compete for the starting job again. He said, uh, no, you're going to have to play receiver. He's like, no, I'm not doing that. I want, I'm a quarterback. I need to do it. So I like that he stuck with the fact that he's not only – like he's going to play receiver that one year, but he was promised right. he was going to be able to battle out for the quarterback job, and right. he didn't get a chance. So he's like, I'm going to go to Northern Colorado. And yep. he went to Northern Colorado. He balled out yeah. there. And then yep. his pro day gets canceled basically because of the rain. So he's throwing in this gym, you know, <laughs> he's, I mean, like the, he's doing as much as he can. Everything right. is going down the hill. Uh, there's an article that comes out in him right before the draft. Wasn't soon enough. He ends up being a UDFA. Um, and he's one of the best preseason quarterbacks I've ever seen. I don't sure. understand if you are. Go- and this is somebody like, Mike Tomlin always says, you know, it's not about the what kind of reps you're getting, the third team, the second team, the first team. It's about what you do with those reps. And I'm sitting there like, if somebody like that is saying that, and I'm not saying the Steelers have to go out and get Slaughter, but I don't understand how no coach in the NFL was saying, wow, this guy, no matter what he was asked to do, he did it. He has like 10 touchdowns, like one interception, whatever, you know, something crazy, yep. thousand yards, all that. Yep. He's just been He's the Raiders number three right now. Is that where he is now? Yeah, I don't know how Peterman is ahead of him. I mean, I know why Peterman's <laughs> ahead of him, but Peterman is not the, the Peterman. I mean, Peter 
<laughs> it's really odd how like obsessed John Gruden is of it, but I'm so bitter yes. because they cut Sloter before he had a chance to play in his preseason game and he didn't get to play last year because of COVID. And right. it just, that is what infuriated me about the whole thing because COVID ruined everything for the young quarterback ecosystem. None of these guys got an opportunity. You have a guy, especially the rookie quarterbacks. And we're talking about yeah. like Jordan Love, for instance. Like Jordan Love was drafted in the first round. Didn't even get a chance to play in preseason. He knew he wasn't going to play because Aaron Rodgers was there. And then all of a sudden, this he's like probably sitting there crossing his uh, fingers like, maybe Rodgers won't come back. Maybe. <laughs> And it's like, then he comes back and he's like, I, I hate my life right now. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, come on. Like, well, what, you know, and then, you know, it's just like, that's my biggest issue. So with Sloter, he bounced around, right? He went to yep. the Broncos first. He balled yep. out with the Broncos. They yep. caught him. The Vikings pick him up on the practice squad. He eventually uh, was active. He was actually active the game they played the 49ers in which Mullen started. I'm still bitter, by the way. Mullen's got the first crack before Slaughter. That If this is a movie, if this is a movie, karma does not exist, and you have the movie all wrong, uh, football gods. But anyway, right. uh, that, there's that. And then he goes to the Lions, and he goes to the, well, he goes to the Cardinals, then he goes to the Lions, and he's with the Bears, and now yeah. he's with the Raiders. So I just don't, I don't get it. And I know, it's, you know, and the problem is it's this, it's this reputation you develop. Like, oh, well, he's been cut by all these teams. Yeah, you could look at it like that. Or maybe you could look at it like maybe none of those were the right fit. You go to the Lions, Stafford's the quarterback there. You go to the Cardinals, they just got Kyler Murray. They had Josh Rosen, you know. Oh, the Vikings, yeah, they just paid Kirk Cousins, and he was on the same team that had Teddy Bridgewater, Case Keenum, and Sam Bradford, mind you. Uh, yep. the, the Broncos were the best fit. They made the mistake of letting him go. Um, yep. And then, you know, with the Bears, I mean, could he have started over Trubisky? I'm not saying he couldn't have, to be honest. With I'm you. not saying so, he couldn't have either. <laughs> you know, it's it's upsetting because, I mean, I, I'm happy for Carr. <laughs> I, I feel like Carr gets absolute crap all the time. I've never finally, understood it. I don't get it either. I mean, you know, he's tough as nails. He's the guy that you want. He He doesn't. He's not a diva, so I don't know why. Like, there's not that mentality. Like, maybe you hate him because he's a diva. No, he's not a diva. He played oh. through that injury when he was he's literally not healthy. A bunch I mean, of actually, he, and he got totally screwed because he took the Raiders to a 12 and four season, and then he gets hurt. He breaks like the bone in his back, and so Connor Cook goes out there, uh, oh and, and you know stinks Woo. up the joint, Woo. and it's like. Dude, Derek Carr brought them to the playoffs, and then he wasn't able to lead them the rest of the way. And so now yep. everyone's like, yeah, he doesn't win the playoffs, and he's always hurt. And it's like, wait, excuse me? Wait, what? Wait, what? what yeah, I, I've never understood. There, once again, we talked about blind taste test. If I were just to show people his numbers, with like no name attached, you'd be like, oh, that guy's pretty good. You know? Yeah. There's, there's something about him that people don't like, and I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if it's because his brother's career didn't pan out. I don't know if it's because he occasionally gets annoyed with some of the really, frankly, stupid questions he's been asked at various points. You know what it is? He's a second-round um, pick, and people don't like that he wasn't a first. And I don't know what it is, but that is that's actually a thing. I feel like we have this first pick syndrome where we we the, these first round picks we'll give them time after time after time. Although I will say some of them don't get the fair chance. I don't think Haskins got the most fair of a chance, but I'll just say that. Um, yeah. I mean, he, he brought some of that on himself too. That's true. That's he did true. Some things that but weren't it, the smartest. <laughs> And, and I don't want to get too much in it, like too far down that path, but I will also say that he had an offensive coordinator who was, you know, working with him in, uh, you know, Kevin O'Connell, who's now at the Rams. I yeah. think that was his guy. I think Kevin O'Connell and him had this connection. I think you finally started to see the confidence at the end of the season. They had a couple W's down the, you know, down the stretch. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know, Ron Rivera comes in. He's like, nope, Scott Turner. <laughs> I know Scott Turner. I know North Turner, right. Scott Turner, you know, and <laughs> it kind of bothered me because, you know, not again, not getting too much into it, but I just feel like when you know a quarterback is doing well with this guy, a young quarterback that was just drafted in the first round, fragile. Why are you trying to mix things up? We went down this road again. I, I can't believe I'm mentioning Sam Bradford again on this, but <laughs> Sam Bradford dealt with five different offenses. Yep. He had yep. to learn five different offenses while also trying to avoid getting hurt like he always did. So right. it was it's a it's bad a combination. 
you yeah. know, and it's like with, right. with Haskins, he had his guy, but, but yeah, going back to, uh, to Carr and, and Sloter, Sloter's better than Peterman. No one can tell me otherwise. Yes. I'm bitter. He yeah. didn't get uh, a shot in preseason. I texted that over, over and over to him. I'm like, man, you should be out there. And he's like, I know I'm just like, it, it, it sucks. <laughs> you know, I hate it for him. Uh, he did ha- you know, it was really cool. He actually came on uh, my live stream uh, earlier in the year um, back when he first signed with the Raiders. But man, I got everybody in this area that watches football knowing this guy's name. So when, uh, when he gets an opportunity, don't be surprised. Yeah. I know American underdogs coming about uh, <laughs> very soon. You know, I, Kurt Warner told us about it last year when he came on our show. Uh, don't be surprised if he's the next sort of Kurt Warner story, if he gets an opportunity, yeah. because he's an yeah. incredible story in, yes. in general. Yep. He's a, he's a great young man. He's got all the components you would want in a – the term developmental quarterback has once again kind of been overused. But, Very overused. Right. Uh, first of all, because most of the teams in the NFL don't know how to develop quarterbacks anymore, but that's a whole other show. Um, yeah. On a couple you more play prospects. that over and over and over again. <laughs> because because it's, been, it's, a, it's a lost art, right? Uh, I mean, who do you trust to develop a young quarterback? Well, Andy Reid, right? He's right at the top of the list. Um Maybe McVeigh, sort of, kind of, right? Um, it's a short list. Um, to develop quarterbacks? To develop, like, what? where do you think of, like, oh, this team knows how to develop young quarterbacks? Like, it's a short list, isn't it? I mean, uh, I, I would, I'd give Shanahan some credit. Uh, I mean, Jimmy, right. yeah, Jimmy Shanahan. G, I think, was, was limited. Uh, I don't, I think, sure. you know, maybe we thought he could be better than he truly could have been. Well, uh, what he got yeah. out of Bethard and what he got out of Mullins, I, I give right. him props because those guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's on the list. Right. McVeigh's on the list. Um, Shanahan's on the list. Obviously, Reed's at the top of the list. I'm going to say, I mean, not really a team, but Joe Brady. I'm going to give yeah, him Yeah, right. Joe Brady, I mean, he's, he's a, he'll be a team soon enough. Uh, he's, he's he'll be a team. The coordinator who's, who's going to be a head coach. Not Matt Nagy. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, no, <laughs> not Matt Nagy. I mean, no, not, we, not on the list. It's a you long list. Yeah, um, it's, not, it's, it's a short list. Arthur Smith. I mean, oh, there we go. There, you know, yeah, I trust Arthur Smith. I, I think Arthur Smith obviously has to get, and, and this is the thing. It, it's week three. The Falcons look horrendous, sure. Yep. But this he, this is a rookie head coach, and we're either going to yep. find out he can be a, a coach or he's an offensive coordinator. And unfortunately, sometimes guys just don't work as head coaches. But it's not fair to write this guy off after two games, man. No, like, no, no. It's no, crazy. That's insanity. Like, and plus, you know, if you can't protect Matt Ryan, you're not, yeah, and you're even if you can't protect Matt Ryan, he still somehow puts up a fight. But it's just yeah. getting to the point where he, I think he's out of Atlanta after this season. I, I there's no way if if he was watching his buddy Julio leave, he's probably he's gonna be sitting here like, wait, Julio, are you the one getting hit constantly? Are are, are you the one getting pressured? You know, thirty times a game. Uh, are you are you getting sacked eight times? I mean, I, I love Julio Jones, but. I, I mean, Matt Ryan is more deserving of anybody than get out of that situation. It'd be, it'd be nice for him to get the Matt Stafford treatment, right? To, to yes. get that, well, that was my thought. And yeah, it'd be nice like, for him to. First thought, I, mean, I was thinking 49ers, I, but they. I'm, have just gonna, I'm just going to throw this. I'm just going to throw this out there. Now, obviously, they just drafted a, a young quarterback, but yeah. the one thing that sort of fits to me would be New England if it weren't for Michael McCorkle Jones. It, he gets to go home, right? A Massachusetts kid. Um, he's essentially a poor man's Tom Brady in terms of what he does well. Yeah. A grinder. They love grinders. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. The whole deal is guys who get there early and stay late and watch extra tape and throw after practice and don't really have a life. He's all of that. Um, so, yeah. Um, if not for Michael McCorkle Jones, I, I, that would have been the perfect spot for him. I don't even know where he would go now. I mean, I, I think, well, I know, no, I mentioned it. Um, well, I mentioned, ah, man, it's tough. I mean, the problem is like Daniel Jones isn't playing horrible football right now. I've had the giants as a 
I mean, I've had them as a fit since they drafted Daniel Jones. I didn't like the pick, but I, I got to say, they're doing exactly what they did with Eli Manning. They're giving him an opportunity. They're trying yeah. to develop around him. Some teams should be taking notes, honestly. I understand the offensive line isn't the way you wanted it to be, but you're drafting. You know, you go out and get you get Parrot, you get uh, Thomas, yep. you know, yep. you, you get out Will Hernandez. I mean, yes, the guys yep. didn't pan out, so you go out, you trade for Billy Price, you trade for Bredesen. We'll see if that helps at all. Um, but man, you know, I, I like that they're at least giving him weapons. They go out and they get Galladay. Yeah, maybe he'll only play five games, but you know, they at least gave it a, a, a shot. You know, <laughs> they went at it. They, they went did. after it. You, yeah, you did. It, they did. It, they like, tried. They rolled the dice. But it also makes my job or, or your job trying to find these fits for these guys so much harder because there's just. There's only 32 jobs. I think we forget about right. that. So, like, when we have people right. like, why doesn't Cam Newton have a job? Because there's 32. There's not 50. There's not 40. There's not 33. Right. There's 32. And the, so the things that the things that go through my mind, if somehow neither of the young quarterbacks in New Orleans panned out. Now, obviously, I think Jameis is going to work out. But if for some reason he too. I think he's going to actually have a really good year. But if for some reason something went wrong. went wrong there, if something went desperately wrong there, and, you know, they realized that, you know, in Taysom Hill they have a, you know, a fun piece, but he's not really a quarterback, that would make sense. For one thing, the offense is really good at the things that he's good at, right? The things that Matt Ryan's good at are things that offense is built around. And though, though Julio is not quite Michael Thomas or Michael Thomas is not quite Julio, you've got the dominant number one receiver, right? You've got the the possession guy. You've got the speed guy. Like it's all, it's basically what he came from in terms of the talent mixture. Do you know how pissed Falcons fans would be if oh, this they would trade happened? Insane. Yeah, they would go insane. They would go absolutely insane. Oh they would my not. God. I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking I can I can literally picture this like, you know, the I don't know if you you watch like the the Marvel what if or whatever on Disney. Yes, Plus. it is. This it is what we're, we're playing right now, Jake. We're playing Marvel. What it's, if. it's literally like the whole world ends if you do that. Like Falcons fans would never <laughs> forgive you. I don't think they'll forgive you if they hear this. And uh, <laughs> it's it's mass chaos. But, just but, imagine but a this. lot of Falcons fans I know want to move on from Ryan. Why? Yes, it's sure. It's true, but here's the funny thing. And and honestly, I want to make it very clear. I believe that Matt Ryan should move on from them, not they should move on from Matt Ryan. No, you yeah. should figure out your offensive line and give this guy an opportunity to win you a Super Bowl. But right. I digress. Right. Anyway, right. Matt Ryan, it this would be essentially what you're saying. Matt Ryan barely missed winning a Super Bowl against the Patriots and Tom Brady. Yep. And then everything went downhill after that. Yep. So we traded him to our arch rival, him. and yep. then they will go with a Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, it would. You talked about movie scripts. I mean, that would be a hell of a movie. Um, oh man, Lord! It wouldn't be well attended, I guess, in the Atlanta, Georgia area. But I think the rest <laughs> would enjoy it. Um, my point protests. is that it's a good. I mean, you're talking. You just you were just talking fits, pure fit. Yes. That's no, I agree fit. with you. Now, I, could I it happen? Probably that. not. It probably would never happen, but, it, but, no. but the fit would be really good, though. Well, it's like, you know, like we're saying, there's just not, you know, what happens in Philly. Honestly, I am higher on Jalen Hurts than most people, so I wouldn't just toss him in the water. Um, I See, I like that you agree on that because the, yeah. the, I, why are first we just all, like he's a second-round pick last year? Why are we just like, nope? Nope, we got to get a first round pick. We got to get. Well, first of all, you know? let's let's give him an entire season, right? At least <laughs> exactly. to figure out what we've got. Let's start with that. Where he's getting starters reps the whole yeah. time. Like, let's yeah, start exactly. with right baseline. If and then let's actually give him. A, so if at the end of this year, we'll have an idea of what we have, right? But to to talk about anything from last year, we just said what happened to all the rookie quarterbacks, right? Yeah, <laughs> he was a rookie quarterback in the COVID nineteen year. I mean, I don't want to say it didn't count, but it kind of didn't count, right? I mean, whatever he did or didn't do, he's learning the offense through Zoom meetings. Yeah. Uh, hey, we've all had to work through Zoom meetings. I get it, but it's not the same. <laughs> you know, I don't know how else to put this. It's oh my not. God. It is not the same. So 
I'm going to give him at least this year before I even try to judge. So that's I've, I'm hold, withholding judgment regarding Jalen Hurts. Here's what I do know. Here's a guy who was a winner. If you want to, what's the guy? I hate when people say that, but he was. He was a winner, right? That he was, yeah. Stick on quarterbacks, which, you know, whatever. You're a winner because you're on really good teams. He was on really good teams. So he's a winner, right? If, he, if he's North Texas, he's not a winner. Right? Um, he'd still be the same guy, but he's not winning as much. Uh, but he's at two great programs and plays really well in two somewhat similar, but not the same systems, right? Um, Alabama tempoed at times, but they weren't a up-tempo offense. They still wanted to run the football, even when they're spreading you out. They still want to pound you uh, in a way that Oklahoma, uh, they'll run the ball sometimes, you know, but but they really want to throw the ball. Like, that's to be very clear. Like, that's, that's why you go to Oklahoma, right? It's to prove you can throw the ball. Because that's what they're doing. They're throwing the football. And it's a system, as I said, where a lot of things are simplified. But yeah. you still have to make the throws. You still have to make the throws. He made a lot of throws, including some tough ones. So he proved to me that he could be in an offense that was throw the ball first, right? Yes. Throw the ball second and run the ball maybe fourth, right? Uh, they threw the ball a lot at Oklahoma. And – so once again, you know, a lot of those throws were sort of predetermined a little bit, but you still got to make them. And some of those throws were made into, you know, he beat some coverage with some throws. He showed he could do it. Are there things I still want him to clean up? Sure. But we're talking about a young quarterback who, once again, last year was thrown into the fire in a COVID-19 year. Uh, there's no other way to put it. Literally, you're learning everything on Zoom meetings. You're looking on your iPad your, or Surface or whatever it is that you're watching everything on. And, you know, whatever. Um, so I'm withholding judgment. I want to get a couple more players out of the way uh, prospect-wise. Yeah. I got a chance to check out Drake, the other Drake, uh, Drake Jackson, the defensive end at USC. Yes, he's, he's very good. Um, I haven't got, you know, fully into it or anything, but I, I have been watching him because – I also like USC. I'm all over the map. You know, I like Alabama, I like USC, I like Kansas. I have my true reason for Kansas's family. Uh, because, I mean, why else are you watching Kansas football if you don't have a connection to it? Uh, I do like watching Jason Bean run faster than everyone else, though. So that's fair. Yes. Um, <laughs> they, they always have at least one super fast guy the last couple of oh, years. Yeah. They have to. How else are you going to sit there and watch that football game? You, you need Like, if, if I didn't have Puka Williams and Khalil Herbert that year, and then Herbert left. Like, he just up and left. We No one knows why. why. Well, and, I mean, you kind of know why. <laughs> well, it, I think it was Puka, but, you know, it, there's – Yeah. yeah I, I mean, there, there's other things that – And I think, he wanted, I think he wanted to be in a situation – I mean, I think he wanted to be in a situation where uh, – I'm not sure, Once again, I'm not sure anything – I mean, I've watched Kansas football for a long time. I, I remember the, the Glenn Mason years. I remember they had some, you know, some years they had, they, you know, were in there and scrapping it up and, you know, upsetting people. Of course, obviously the Mark Mangino years, Todd Reesing out there, you know, flinging that bean. Oh, I got to ask you because you mentioned Todd Reesing. Oh, Do you yeah. think Todd Reesing could play in this, this league now? Do you think, because I've always said Todd Reesing, his biggest issue was not his arm strength, was not his mobility, was not his accuracy. It was always about tiny. his size. Yeah, he's was, he was tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But he was, Tyler Murray he, and and Russell right. Wilson it, have blown that, that would help open. That would help him. Yeah. I don't know if he'd be a starter. I think he. I think somebody find a place for him somewhere in the league now. I think that. Yeah. I don't. Well, that's better than what happened with him. He had one much tryout better, right? and then you know yeah. didn't get a chance. I, I yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there. nobody was really even. For, to be honest, nobody's even very interested in him. I mean, that's yeah. Desmond Briscoe, I think, was on that team. Yes, I, I really liked Briscoe. He had yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a couple nice seasons with uh, Tampa. You know, he yep. had um, he was he was pretty solid. He had a good connection with Josh Freeman. Um, yeah. Then they speaking had of, speaking of fascinating stories of like what the heck happened to somebody. I mean, once again, we have to do a different show for Josh Freeman. I know some people <laughs> around the Tampa Bay team who. Gave me some insight into what the heck happened to. And once again, you mentioned young quarterbacks with certain coaches. Yeah. You uproot them, right? When you – that shock to the system. Some of them never recover from it. You know, he was in a very sort of nurturing environment with the staff he had originally. And then, uh, you know, 
it, I heard this, something bizarre about Josh Freeman at the senior bowl. I don't know if it's yeah. true. I think you're telling me it's true by not telling me it's well, true. Well, he's a he's a guy that needs whatever. We'll talk more later. Um, <laughs> not I want to get to on air, but he's a particular guy. He's a and if you coach him exactly the right way, he's going to ball out. He's he has. We're talking about a guy. I with, liked him. I mean, he was my QB two. I think that year. Um, I mean, I mean, he shredded Kansas, but I, I, I don't know why. He shredded I, a lot of people. I, I like a lot of teams that shredded Kansas. So I, I don't, not teams, but players from those teams, well, like but, you know, Donario Alexander. Look at his rookie. Mackley. Look at his rookie. Look even. Look at his rookie year. Even. I mean, yeah. he, it's not a super talented team he's on, and he's playing well. But when they took away, when that coaching staff that originally had him and was nurturing him was gone, and then they had some sort of you know toughness guys, you know, we're gonna toughen you up, or whatever. Um, that, you're it, talking about Shiano? Yeah, his staff was not the same as – it was a different environment coaching-wise. So uh, before Shiano, it was Raheem Morris, right? Yep, and he was clicking, you know, with yeah. that staff. And I always I say something happened there because Raheem – Oh, well, a couple of something's happened. But again, some of it I, I definitely yeah. can't get into on air. But, yeah, no, uh, I feel that. I mean, Raheem did a good job. I think he's the only coach in the mer- since the merger with a, a completely new roster of – it was like a completely new starting lineup of all 22 guys. Like he had completely new starters, <laughs> and they won 10 games. He's the only, one, the only team to ever do that. Raheem Morris is going to get his second bite at the apple sooner, I hope, rather than later, and he's going to do really well. I'm excited for it because I I've been, two I've been backing this guy for a while. Yeah, and then he's going to the Rams, be, and now I absolutely am backing him. Oh, and and he's going to get another chance to be a head coach. He's going to do really well. And Todd Bowles, next time he gets a chance to be a head coach, watch, watch out for whatever yeah. team Todd Bowles next. Um, you're, because- you're, uh, we're speaking the same language because yeah. guess who I wanted to replace Bagnola? <laughs> I wanted Todd Bowles, not Jeff Fisher. I wanted Todd Bowles. I well, well that would have been the better been move. Super Bowl. Jeff Fisher's no, 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 no. I want Todd Bowles. <laughs> give me Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles went to the Jets. Okay, everything he did. I give everyone a pass for anything that happens with the Jets. The, honestly, yes. The media <laughs> is so hard to play under with that. I mean, the New York media is insane. But, but on top the media, of that, it's the, the, the organization is just—it's oh, yes. it, all out of whack. I mean, I had Blake Cashman on my show. And Cashman said over and over again, we loved Sam. I truly believe that this team was hyped to get him out. You know who I'm talking about and get Sam in the driver's seat to truly take over this organization. And I'm sure they were rooting for him like heck on uh, Thursday Night Football last night because they know that this guy, what he's doing right now, he would be doing with the Jets. And it's, it's crazy to admit that because it's the Jets, but it's not like this lingering cloud, like, hey, you're on the Jets, so you're bad. It's who's there? And they got right. the, the big bad wolf out, so to speak. And yep. Mike LaFleur yep. with Sam Darnold, if they would have just given him an opportunity, it would have done happened. something. It would have It would have happened. It would have happened. So a lot of times do players bust? Sure. But organizations bust players even more often than players bust themselves. Yes. I have said this for years, and I will stand by it. I could, once again, I'll give you a list as long as your arm of, of organizations that busted players who were going to be. We just talked about what happened to Josh Freeman. I mean, some of that was due to Josh's stuff, too. Josh has some stuff that, once again, I don't want to talk about it on air. Yeah. But there were people who knew how to handle it. And then there were people who didn't. <laughs> I mean, it's this, right? Rams um, busted Austin Davis. Oh, my God. We are the same person sometimes. Okay. So, I love Austin. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you how. Kyle Slaughter and Austin Davis are two guys that I once again I bothered everybody about. <laughs> I was so, literally the same person. So, so Austin Davis, right? <laughs> he's a baseball player, right? He, he's yeah. a, he gets a baseball scholarship, walks onto the football team, right? Um, was like a sixth stringer at first, right? Just slowly but surely claws his way up the depth chart. And then breaks all the records. He owns all the records, right? All those Brett Favre records, get out of here, right? Um, My God. Smart, tough, good athlete. Not a cannon, but a strong enough arm. Uh, I, 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 I always thought that Seattle would be like a great landing spot for him because he's, he, going there. <laughs> he's essentially right, but he's essentially white Russell Wilson. Down to the baseball contract, right? I mean, he's he's yeah. I mean, he's basically white Russell Wilson. Um, 
you're talking about guys who have almost exactly the same makeup, right? Um, you know, I just think that he just needs a different situation. And situation is everything for quarterbacks. It's everything, right? Does Tom Brady become Tom Brady if he goes to the Jets? No. 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 Not for in a million years. As talented as he is, he never becomes this guy that is now at the top of everyone's pyramid of quarterbacks. He is a guy who's fighting for his life to stay in the league if he goes to the Jets. It's it situations everything for quarterbacks. Absolutely. I, I it was so upsetting to watch Austin Davis every year in preseason. Wow. We're really Kill talking it. about Kyle. We're really talking about Kyle Slaughter right now without even saying Kyle Slaughter's name. Uh, it was really upsetting to watch him kill it with the Rams, kill yep. it with the Dolphins. I, I said over and over again, the Rams better keep him on the 53 or the Dolphins are going to uh, take him. And sure enough, the Dolphins brought him back. And so then the Dolphins brought him back, and he's on the practice squad after they dump him from the 53 onto the practice squad. Rams pick him up, add him to the 53, gets an opportunity. Then it's like at the end of the year, you know, it's really just asked to hand the ball up, right? Then 2014 – uh, their huge eight million dollar a year at the time that was huge for a tackle. Uh, <laughs> their huge eight million dollar a year tackle Jake Long gets Sam Bradford injured in preseason. A third stringer comes up and pushes him and tears ACL. All that. Then yep. uh, they decide, okay, so we're gonna get uh, Sean Hill in here and he's gonna be the starter. And I'm sitting there. Sean Hill. Sean, Sean Hill. Hill. Come on, Sean. man. I've been waiting Sean. for this Austin Sean. Davis moment. <laughs> So, so here's here's what I'm going to say about Sean Hill. You know how when, when you get a wallet or a picture frame, it comes oh like stock photo? Yes. Sean Hill is literally the stock photo back and forth. <laughs> and that's not bad. That's not no. bad at all. That's no. just not like, hey, I'm not excited. Give me something to be excited about. Every, all the fans wanted Austin Davis. So, of course, Sean Hill gets hurt in the first game against the Vikings. Uh, Austin Davis isn't able to come back 31 to three or whatever. So all the fans are like, Austin Davis sucks, all that, whatever. Uh, <laughs> then after that, we know what happens. Austin Davis turns Brandon. Uh, yeah. He turns Brian quick into like Vincent yes, Jackson. I remember that. I mean, he, all of a sudden this lackluster offense, this offense that, well, I can't say that 2013 when Sam Bradford towards ACL, Mike Mitchell pushed him uh, on the sideline against Carolina. He was second in the league in every category passing, and no one cared because that was your Peyton Manning shattered records. But he yeah. was actually on to something, and that pissed me off, that, that torn ACL. But anyway, 2014, he gets hurt. The whole feeling is that we're just going to manage the football game. We're just going to have Sean Hill be the guy. Uh, you know, we got Zach Stacy. We got uh, well, yeah, it was just Zach oh, Stacy. The Zach Stacy and Daryl uh, Daryl Richardson show. Was so, Isaiah P still there? Was he gone? Um, he was hurt. He got hurt in preseason that year. That's so, right. yes, so yeah, you. it was uh, Daryl Richardson, who we liked from Abilene Christian. Just, you know, Brandon. good change of pace, scat back. And then Zach Stacy, who I loved. I could watch him run all day at Vanderbilt. You could not bring him down. And that bowling. guy, you talk about doing it with no help. That poor guy. Oh, my God. And he was he was doing it with no help at Vanderbilt because he's going up against – See, That's what by I'm beating about. the SEC, That's what I'm talking about. you go they up against had, SEC had, teams. Right. I mean <laughs> – because he's got a team that can't really throw the ball. I think was it was it Aaron Rodgers' little brother who was their quarterback at the time? Jordan Rodgers, yeah, I Jordan Rodgers, so. right? So, and no offense to Jordan Rodgers, but he's not Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> right? He's not Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. Um, so teams are just playing like nine in the box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it was it was bad. And he's still chugging out there, getting four point eight yards a carry. I was like, how are you doing it? How is it's, this? It's, <laughs> he. He was a bowling ball, you know. He was so fun to watch. He almost yes. ran for a thousand yards with the Rams. He missed it by like twenty-four yards or something like that. Um, yeah. But here's the the important thing here: the Rams. People forget it was the whole. What are they going to do without Stephen Jackson? Or yeah, because he was with the Falcons. And I felt pretty confident in the run game because I really like Stacy and I like Daryl Richardson. I didn't like right. that. They just, they didn't bring Jackson back because I want him to retire Ram, but let's right. be honest here. I also want Jackson to just win a, a ring. So I understood him yeah. going to the Falcons made sense. So we watch and it's like, this team can't run the football. They cannot right. run the football. They can't block. They cannot run the football. 
It's not working. So it made it even more impressive what Austin Davis was able to do. And yep. the thing is, people look at wins and losses, so they don't really care at the end of the day. But, I mean, <laughs> since, like, Kurt Warner and Mark Bolger in that era were talking, no yep. one had been pushing the ball down the field the way Austin Davis was. Sam right. Bradford was a short and intermediate passer, could throw the yep. deep ball at times, but it would wow you. It would be like, oh, my God, he threw a deep ball. You know, it was, he's very similar to Jared Goff late in Jared yes. Goff's Rams tenure. Uh, right. I saw yeah. so many similarities that terrified me. But um, <laughs> with Austin Davis, like you said, with Russell Wilson, he was doing that Houdini act, and yep. he was making plays. And yep. you know, I remember distinctively the Cowboys game when this guy throws his fourth touchdown of the game uh, against the Cowboys and Jared Cook drops it and then is on the sidelines and shoves him. This is why I don't like Jared Cook. And he shoves him. And I remember William Hayes wanted to rip his head off. He was so mad. I love seeing that. And at that point, I was like, all right, he's their, he's their quarterback. The way they stuck up for him, that, that guy has won the attention respect. and the respect of the locker room. And, I mean, rightfully so. He was incredible in that game. But all anyone talks about is he threw the interception at the end of the game. Because, right. God forbid, his receiver – tight end that's getting paid eight million dollars everyone was getting paid eight million dollars like apparently but <laughs> just handing you know, out. it's like you're just handing out but uh Austin Davis you know. wasn't making eight million though he's no no he's making 500k yeah i think he's making 500k. <laughs> i mean this is my that's my thing is like he's out there and, and you know a big thing is frank signetti's ridiculous offense that made no sort of sense so you're telling me you have no pass protection you don't have a running game we're gonna have austin davis who is a udfa guy who you've never given a chance really we're gonna have him throwing 50 times a game we're gonna have him <laughs> running five and seven step dropbacks with no help and then we're gonna blame him for fumbling the ball we're gonna blame him for throwing interceptions while he's throwing touchdowns and keeping us in the game remember the philly game that game yes. is so mind-boggling to me. They're down, what, 28-7? to seven. Yep. Nick Foles fumbles the ball untouched. And the Rams yes. and – like, because keep in mind, they're in Philly. It's a tough place to play, tough environment. Always. And Always. Uh, yeah, I think it was the first road game Austin Davis had ever started. And yep. he was he was having a rough time, but then he battled back. And he led them all the way back to potentially tie the game. Keep in mind, that was all started because Nick Foles fumbled the ball yep. without being touched. And right. then Austin Davis led this huge comeback. And at the end, he, like, he threw he like Austin knocked Pettis. it off his own hip or something, right? Or something. Yeah, it was so bizarre. And then for whatever yeah. reason, the Rams watched that. And they're like, someone in the, the front office saw Austin Davis go toe-to-toe with Nick Foles, come back from 28-7, to lose because Austin Pettis dropped two uncharacteristic <laughs> drops and then they caught him. Um, yeah. <laughs> someone watched that and said, you know what we should do? We should trade for the guy that let us back in that game. We should <laughs> trade for Nick Foles because he's better than the one that than the guy that just almost led us to win the game. Right. So right. no, I'll never understand how certain just, teams. Right. Uh, and and right. then when they benched him again, and then the, this is this, and you know what I'm going to say. The moment the Rams beat the Raiders 52 nothing, it did not matter who the quarterback was. The fans were going to be forever in debt to that quarterback, and of right. course. The run game all of a sudden took off when, uh, you know, he wasn't the quarterback anymore. When they benched him for Hill, it took right. off when Hill was the quarterback. And so everyone's mm, like, yeah. this is why we need Hill because uh, the, the run game works because people respect. No, you're just pulling crap. I mean, that's that's complete yeah. garbage. The run no, game started no, to work Hill. because it's yeah. just oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Sean, like I said, Sean Hill is literally the stock photo backup quarterback. Oh, uh, the, and so, the yeah. whole yeah. thing was just, uh, and, I know. you know. Foles and then training for Keenum and I mean I like Case Keenum I do I'll, I'll be real with you I well think he's just has, but he's know. just an older not as athletic version of the guy you have in Austin yeah. Davis no absolutely <laughs> but I mean I, I like I like that he's still in the league I like that he's still fighting I like that yes. he's competitive I like you know I don't feel like he was treated fairly in Minnesota I mean he led you no. to the NFC title game it's the best thing that Mike Zimmer's done there and he did it with him and then they're like yeah we know what we should do we should pay thirty million guaranteed, all guaranteed, a year to a guy that's never gotten that far. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's. Do that's that. the guy. That's it, it's do. like, and that's it's not they're not Kirk Cousins. I think he's a good quarterback, but he's, he's not solid. You know, but, how much but, better is he than Keenum in that moment? Not not now, but in that moment, I don't know how much of an upgrade that was. Well, but, you know, and the Foles thing, I just I hate Nick Foles. I really I do not like Nick Foles. <laughs> wow. 
I, 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 I football hate him, right? Like I would never wish anything bad on him. Um, but well, in, you know, he obviously, of course he goes back to Eagles beats the Rams in that one game at the Coliseum. Cause of course, you know, he's just constantly a thorn in my side, but it just annoyed me because he has that good game week one in 2015. Right. Uh, they yeah. beat the Seahawks, and now all of a sudden, all the expectations are through the roof. The fans are like, oh, Foles is our guy. And I'm like, no. Do you realize that you could have had a first rounder for Sam Bradford, and they <laughs> decided to take a second rounder to Nick Foles for Sam Bradford? I would have taken the first rounder. <laughs> yeah, that was quizzical. So that was, oh, man. I, I like Nick Foles just fine. He is a, a solid backup quarterback. Yes. Better than Sean Hill, if that helps. Uh, <laughs> But they they got him to be the starter in the franchise when they which when Les Snead Les Snead got really smart when McVay took over. But Les Snead was sitting here like you don't delete Sam Bradford, then deleted Sam Bradford and got Nick Foles in, and then somehow leaked. Why I don't know why he he admitted this, but he's like, yeah, you know they offered us a first, but we wanted Nick Foles, so we took a second. I'm like, Are you <laughs> kidding me? Right now? <laughs> like, Here's what I will say. You don't say. I was going to say, I will give him just points for having the cojones to say that, like, in, where people could hear you. I would not have admitted that. But uh, a couple more players. A couple more players, real quick. Yeah. Uh, okay, oh so God. you briefly mentioned Kyle Hamilton, and everyone's in love with Kyle Hamilton. Some people are getting a little too far out over their skis with some of the comparisons they're making. Um, I don't make the comparisons they're making, but he's a really good football player. Um, yes. What do you like about him, and, you know, where do you see him – fitting in in the NFL now. Well, I see him as a very, he's a rangy safety, very rangy. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's really my thing. If I'm ever going to draft a safety that high, he needs to be a guy that's going to be like 2018 Vic Fangio, Eddie Jackson type of guy to me that can cut all areas of the, the defense, you know, cut all areas of the field off. You know um, I don't know what he's going to test. I don't know what you think about that. Um, Gun to my head. I'm going to guess. Four five one thirty six inch vert nine no not nine I think ten four probably in the broad he'll have a good three count four oh four four three somewhere in there he's quick like he's people think he's blazing fast on a straight line he's not but he's quick especially for a guy yeah. his change of direction for a guy of his height is what makes you go oh, right that's that's well, the thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, well, we've seen in the past, like guys like that. Um, what's the one from the, the, the uh, Washington football team? They, they got uh, Louis. You don't mean Sean Taylor, do you? No, oh. L- Louisville. Uh, he was like oh. six foot five safety. Oh, I know you're talking about. Oh, um, yeah, he was too tall. Um, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> Way that didn't tall. work. That did, yeah, no. he, and it really, it's not always or really ever going to work. There was an Oklahoma State guy who was sort of the same deal, like six four and seven eighths or something, and he just couldn't change direction. The Cowboys had him Harvey Clemens. That's who it was. Yeah, and the, uh, right, and then, uh, but yeah, but there's a point of no like. It looks fun, like oh look how long his arms are. He's thirty, yeah. he's like whatever. But but at some point when Stefan Diggs does those Stefan Diggs things and you literally are on the ground because you, you, you just couldn't be like, Oh, 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 oh. like you're going to pull something like <laughs> cool to be tall, but you don't want a guy who's, it's just, there's a point at which it's too tall. I mean, it, the best way I can say it is when I was younger, I used to think those guys were like, it, like you can go back and you can look at my notes and you'll see, Back then, I loved Brandon Coleman. I loved, you know, Josh Harvey Clemens. But then as I've gotten older and I've been become more wise, so to speak, at least I think, um, yeah. I just realized that that's like that's Madden. You know, that's created player. That's that's fun. Uh, it's cool to have a guy that's six foot five in, in a video game. But, you know, unless he's playing like he's the Calvin Johnson of corners or safeties or what have right. you. Right. It's just dumb. It doesn't make any sense to you know draft a guy like that that high. It doesn't make any sense to not draft a guy at all. Like if a guy can play, he can play. Sure. Um, right. But like you know, in terms of Obi Melifonwu, like I didn't never, I never understood that. Um, whereas Afadu Melifonwu, his brother, I feel very high on. I loved him. He, I think he was a, he graded out as my third corner in this draft. Okay, this you like him draft. more than I do. Here's what I do like about them, and for. One of the, Obi is really a guy who here's what he really, really is, right? He's Adam Archuleta, but taller and you know, Nigerian. But he's a guy who's who's essentially 
best at just running at something, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. put it that way, that's what he's great at. As so long as they don't move. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But if you just give him a situation where, like, you bring him on corner blitz or slot blitzes, oh, he's awesome at that. Like, he's yeah. killer at that. He might be the best at that of anybody, right? Um, um, he's, he's terrific at that. And if you just want him running in a straight line at stuff, great at that. Like special teams, he'll be one of the best gunners probably in the league. The problem is that guys change direction in the NFL. Yeah. And when that happens, it creates problems for him. And so when he gets matched up on Robert Woods or Cooper Cup, it's just ugly. It's just – it's unfair. You know, oh, it's yeah. – it's, because those guys are doing – once again, unlike the N1 mixtape guys, it's not three different moves. It's one really amazing move executed at, right, at maximum warp, right? And he's trying to get out of his backpedal, right? And by the time he's done, they're in the end zone. Like, it's like, oh, I mean, you've got great makeup speed, but it doesn't matter if you make up to get in the picture as the guy's crocking the end zone. Like, that doesn't excite me. That's I want Justin that. King. You just there's a lot Justin of those King. guys. Do you but remember him a lot of those from Penn State? The yes, Rams but there's a lot of those guys. Round. People oh get excited God. about makeup speed, and I would prefer that you not have to be making up, right? <laughs> like, That's a great point. Yeah, right. Chris Harris doesn't have great makeup speed, but he doesn't need it because he doesn't have to make up. You know where he went to school? Yes, I know exactly. <laughs> how is there? Is there? What do you think about that tandem? Right, yeah. you've got. Everybody knew about Akeem, right? I mean, because uh, uh, he's uh, – he, first of all, he made sure you knew about it, right? He's – Akeem Tully made sure you knew. Like, he he wasn't going to let you not know about him. And then Mr. Harris is quietly going about his business, goes undrafted, which is just dumb. Oh, God. <laughs> it's just – And then Stucky went undrafted, too, ends up being in the Pro Bowl. I, I mean, I, I don't know. He got hurt, right? Is that what happened to him? No, they just didn't – like, they just didn't – oh, oh, like, why he's still not in the league? Yeah, but I'm Stucky. Oh, yeah, Stucky got hurt. And then he got hurt. Okay, he got hurt. Yeah. I loved Darnold Stucky. I loved him. He was, I was great. Huge on him. Yes, yes, he said. Um, okay, a couple more players, and then we'll, we'll close this up. Because <laughs> um, we could go all day, I'm realizing that. You and I have this have many things in common. I could uh, tell when we were on the phone. I could tell this is exactly how it would go. I was very excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you watched any Texas A&M stuff yet? Um, a little bit of Isaiah Spiller. So, okay, so I'll know. start with I'll start with Isaiah Spiller. He is currently my RB one. Now there's a bunch of guys who are like nipping at his heels, right? Yeah. It's close. It's not like he's out there by himself. And Kenneth Walker the third has been making up ground like nobody's business. Um, I kind of liked him at, at Wake Forest, but I've watched him in person. I've watched him on tape, and it's like, I, wow! Like it seems like when he's gotten faster and his balance has improved. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him, or maybe it's just he has way better blocking. But um, he's been an unstoppable killing machine at Michigan State. He was a good player at Wake Forest, but he's just been a – he's been like, you know, a like dim mock death touch. Like no one can handle him. Um, but, yeah, let's talk Spiller. Um, I like that he's in an offense where he's asked to do some of everything, right? Um, that offense asks you – you can't just be a guy who runs with the football in that offense. They ask, yeah. you, to, to, they ask you to protect the quarterback. They ask you to catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, tell me about what you notice when you watch Spiller. I don't know why. Every time I watch him, um, there's one player that just comes to mind. Maybe I'm just totally off balance here, but I kind of see Travis Etienne. I don't know. I just I he's feel like he's a very, bigger very, guy, very but yeah, they've got some things in common. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. He's definitely bigger, but I definitely see Travis Etienne. He's my number two. Um, I have Kyron Williams as my number one. Kyron Williams, okay. That's I love a, his we'll Williams next. Then I love his his contact balance. Uh, both of them actually, I love their contact yeah. balance. Um, you know, I think Spiller. It's going to be the Spiller and Williams show. I think Eric Gray. I also like from Oklahoma as well. Um, you know, haven't gone too uh, far into it. What happened to Brees Hall? By the way, I was hearing so much about him, and now I don't hear well, anything about him. I mean, he's still doing all the same things, but he's not getting the same level of success. I think his offensive line isn't as good as it was last year. Yeah, and I think people finally figured out they don't have to respect the pass game. <laughs> um, oh wait, Brock Purdy's not good. Oh well, then let's pack the box. I mean, no, I don't, yeah. I well, that's so normally how it there. goes. <laughs> I don't know why it took people so long to figure it out. It's like, oh, wait, we don't really have to respect the passing game. 
And Xavier Hutchins is a really good wide receiver. I, I, I'm apologizing for him. Um, I don't know if it's – I guess it's too late to hit the transfer portal because the season started, Xavier, but um, Miami could really use you. Uh, but uh, he's 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 a really good wide receiver um, who's not going to get the attention he should get because Brock Purdy can't get the ball to him. But it sounds like Michigan, by the way. Oh, oh, right. Hmm. Okay. Uh, like, no, no, I mean, like, you know, you go back. Like, there's a receiver I loved in Donovan Peoples-Jones. Um, yeah. And then a, a running back last year, you know, Captain yeah. America. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Evans. Yes. Right, Chris Evans. <laughs> Just, uh, who, you know. who, who now, I mean, you talked about guys who, who were, uh, what do you call it, um, um, preseason all-stars, right? He was a preseason all-star, right? Yeah. All In my all-preseason team. Absolutely. And they, uh, they love him. I, he's going to have a role. They should. And they should, but uh, yeah, let, let's let's finish up with Kyron Williams and Isaac Spiller. Maybe we'll talk like one or two others. So what yeah. I like about Spiller is, like I said, you're asked to do everything. He's got good size. He accelerates for a guy his size. He can really accelerate. Like you yeah. mentioned, Etienne. Etienne's obviously like just big enough, right? If you were a little smaller, people would worry about it. But he's just big enough. Two hundred fourteen, five eleven. Like that's where people think, like, oh yeah, you're big enough, right? If you're a little smaller than that, people worry. So he's big enough. Spiller is, I from what I'm hearing about the measure out of like like six feet and three quarters, you know, just under six one, and he's about two seventeen. So, you know, he's not a huge back. He's like he's like, he's like right there. He's like he's exactly the right, you know, like oh that's what NFL running backs look like, right? Yeah. He's, he's 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 the right size. He can catch the ball. Um, the the person I've been comparing him to is uh, is Melvin Gordon. And I think he's going to have a similar kind of uh, career, both college and into the NFL. Once again, depending on where he lands, uh, I think he could be a full like load back, 24 touches a game, but teams seem to be moving away from that. Some teams, it makes sense. Some teams really should probably consider going back to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we could do a whole show about like how teams – like should you do this, but don't do it. <laughs> you don't have to follow the trend just because other teams are doing running back by community. You have to. If you have oh. an actual dud, give them the ball. Whatever. Um, but no, but- I I agree. I think it's such a it's like baseball and in the whole analytic thing. I mean, that's really what it's become. It's well, everyone else is doing it, so I guess we have. Everyone's to. Everyone's pulling their starters after a hundred pitches. This guy's a horse, and he's just getting started. Like he's getting better. It's- but we're pulling it because everyone does that. <laughs> I just it, that's like that is literally the best comparison I can make because it's like, oh, well, you know, even though I know we have Dalvin Cook or I know we have Christian McCaffrey or I know we have Derrick Henry, let's have well, that's what I like about the Titans. They don't do that, but they, well, realize, they, they might when Darian, Darian, uh, Darian Ten Evans is there, but you know, yeah, right? But they realize, I mean, he gets a few touches of uh, third downs, whatever, but they realize that Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry, yeah. And so when they get in trouble, like, watch whenever they get in trouble. They, they, there's no more pretense. But they yeah. Like, okay. All right, we, we realize. <laughs> We're about to offense. lose the game if we don't do it. Right. All right. Right. We pretended yeah. to be a balanced offense, but now we pretense is gone. Derek here is getting the ball four <clears throat> out of five times the rest of this game until we win or lose. <laughs> Whenever Cincinnati's they- finally using Joe Mixon. Yes. Oh, yeah. Finally. Finally. Hey, there's a crazy idea. Joe Mixon. That's another guy that that Spiller kind of reminds you of too, right? Oh yeah, that, I can see About that. The same size, um, moves. Yeah, the, the size. As far as like when I was saying ETN, it wasn't really the size, so to speak. I mean, maybe the thickness, not really like how t- like how high, like the height, so to speak. But um, yep. I just I don't know. Like I see the pass catching ability. Um, yep. I think he's a better uh, he's a better guy in pass pro. I think Spiller. Yeah. Than, uh, yeah. Well, that's ETN's, where the that's where the size kind of helps him. He's got that yeah big frame. Well, you know who's really good at, at pass pro who's not that big is Daryl Henderson for the Rams. That's why he plays so much. Yep. He's, yep. He I mean, would shock anybody. Some smaller backs are great at it. I mean, yeah. Walt Payton was 5'10 and a quarter, 204 pounds, and I've never seen him in better at pass pro. <laughs> Walt Payton was like an extra offensive lineman in pass pro. He was devastatingly Marshall good. Marshall Falk. Yeah, Marshall Falk was top probably 10 of all time at it. And once again, talking 5'10 and – 208, I think, is what he played at most of his career. Yeah. Um, oh, you mentioned Kyron Williams. I don't want to, you know, not talk about your guy. Yeah. Uh, I see a guy with really good acceleration. That's a guy that reminds me actually more of Etienne than, than Spiller. But um, tell me what you think of, of Kyron Williams. 
I'm curious what he's going to run. Um, I don't, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter to me because I mean, you watch the film and it's going to translate to the NFL. That's what I need to worry about. And I know it, it will. Um, finding a comparison with him is tough. I mean, I, I just, I don't know why I kind of lean towards like a David Wilson, Doug Martin combination. Yeah. 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 Um, Not quite as thick as those two, but he, cause he's yeah. one eighty seven or something. Yeah. He, he's under 200 for sure. Um, yeah. but it's that, it's the contact balance, but also, you know, you, I'm sure you saw the run the other day that he had. Yes. I mean, he's had some spectacular runs. Doug Martin yeah, used to do that. Him. You know, yeah. and I think the problem is that, and, and I can tell this isn't the case with you, but I know a lot of people where they'll hear Doug Martin, David Wilson. That doesn't sound like a guy I want in the first round or second <laughs> round. But no, no, no it, it's it's the style of which he runs. Right. Like I, I compare I, somebody I love to Lee Suggs, and people are like, I thought you liked him. No, I mean, <laughs> just because he reminds me of Lee Suggs doesn't mean. First of all, Lee Suggs in a different situation. Mm-hmm. Than him. Anyway, yeah, uh, he was on a. For people have somehow forgotten the Browns, even though they called them the Browns, they were an expansion franchise. Yeah, let's not pretend otherwise. Exactly. He was the worst team in football with room to spare. And, <laughs> They, their offensive line was one of – I've been watching football once again since 1971, Jake. Um, it's in the bottom five or six of – and I've, I watched the Tampa Bay, the original Tampa Bay, that expansion Tampa Bay. It was right there with them. It was right there with the worst versions of the Saints teams, that poor Archie Manning getting treated like a human pinata. It was at the bottom of the bottom, and I've seen terrible offensive line play. Human, People play, oh, the Saints have a terrible offensive line. To me. Right. People say the Saints have a – no, no. The Saints have a poor offensive line. Not terrible. I've seen terrible. That's the, the the Seattle offensive line is poor, but it's not terrible. I've seen so much worse. I mean, the Browns offensive line, when they resuscitated or whatever term you want to use, that – poor Tim Couch. Speaking of guys that got busted, whew, I'm not saying Tim Couch would have been great under any circumstance, but he never had a chance. That poor no. guy. Jesus. No. Oh. Oh. No, I, I, I mean, I, I definitely hear you there. Um, <laughs> I, a hundred percent agree. Uh, I mean, you know, going back to like we were talking about quarterbacks, uh, I, I don't, yeah, like you said, I don't think Tim Couch would have been like a superstar or anything like that. But, but, but could he have been as good as say Sam Bradford if in a better situation? Yes, I think he could have been yeah. a Sam Bradford type in a better situation. Uh, similar guys, both really good. Speaking of slam dunk champions, right? Both high school slam dunk champions, both six foot five. Both played in an offense that comes from, I mean, how mummy, how mummy based passing schemes, the, the, you know, the spread them and shred them offenses, um, you know, where the playbook kind of fits on a cocktail napkin, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm only half joking when I say that. I mean, when you talk to guys like Leach and these other guys, they say, if I had to, I could fit most of my playbook on a cocktail napkin. And they say it with pride. Like, they don't feel like having a million plays is what you want to do anyway. Give me 12 plays that I know I can run against any defense. That's what they want to do. Yeah. No, in in, in, a, in a sense, it's like, I mean, it's not a, you know, people focus on that. Maybe some will look at it as like a measuring stick, but it's like, hey, well, what what's the point? You know, it's like, hey, if, if we can run those 12 plays better than you can run your thousand, I'll take yep. the 12. Um, right. You know, with, at the other spectrum, we have John Gruden, who has 220 different passing. Yeah, so. well, that's. <laughs> The spider two wide banana. That's all I can say to that. Um, <laughs> so, no, with the uh, with the um, the the comparisons, the player comparisons. Yep. The two that I've gotten more blowback than anybody on. Ready for this? And you okay. you'll, you will probably disagree, but you know, first one is a doozy. Okay, you have to understand my process in this. Okay. Okay. Lamar Jackson, I compared to not Michael Vick, like a lot of people did. I compared him to Steve no. Young. Because I felt like oh. while he's not a lefty, so to speak, and I don't really care if that, that does not matter to me. Right, I know what you're saying. I felt like Lamar Jackson watching the film, people like the way it was conveyed is that, well, he's just a running quarterback or he just wants to yeah. throw on the run. He wants to leave the pocket. I didn't see that on film. I saw somebody that yeah. actually looked better in the pocket. Um, and yeah. I didn't see somebody that was always going to try to run the ball. And I actually saw somebody that I thought struggled more throwing outside the pocket, which is why I didn't like, I thought Don McNabb was great at that. That's why I didn't oh. ever include, oh. I didn't include Don McNabb because I'm like, right. he's not yeah. McNabb. McNabb could yeah. throw on a dime anywhere outside the pocket. McNabb, to me, McNabb's more like Steve Young, despite being right-handed than, than Lamar is in terms of 
how he ran and a bunch of like yeah. But but here's what I'll say about Lamar. And the, my comparison was more like Randall Cunningham. Uh, okay. Both build wise, both kind of lanky, almost skinny guys. Um, though obviously Cunningham was taller at six four and a half. Um, but move similarly, like really fluid. Like I'll never forget, and I don't know if how much Randall Cunningham tape you watch because obviously <laughs> you tired many years before you start watching watching ball. But no, he I like him. Moves where one of the people, one of the nicknames that somebody gave him was Plastic Man. Right, he used to be able to like matrix people. Right, <laughs> where he would like you know, I think guys would go right. No, I've like, seen it. it oh. Yeah, he's he was a delight to uh, go back and watch. And, and that's, what, that's also side. something that, that Lamar can do, right? Almost yeah. appear, appear, right? In he the did open. the other night. He just did yes. like the whole – he just took the ball and whipped it over the guy's head. I'm like, yep. what did he just do? Yep, yep. So – but here's – but but like Cunningham, I think he will mature into a guy who kills you in the pocket, which yes. Cunningham did in his, in his later career. Um, okay, a couple more players. But yeah, yeah so my other guy I thought about when I watched your guy Kyron was, um, though he's a little bit thinner, but similar in a lot of ways was Ray Rice. Um, okay, yeah, I can see that. That's another guy that he, your your guy reminded me of. Uh, have you watched the offensive lineman from Texas A&M, Kenyon Green? Another uh, a little bit. I have him fourth <clears throat> in my out of five in my interview. okay. So uh, he yeah. he's a, once again if he goes to I keep mentioning the Ravens, but that's. The, once again, another guy would be a perfect fit for what the Ravens like to do. He is just um, like a guy who like can uproot tree tree stumps, right? I mean, he's just power, lower body power for days. <laughs> he, some people think he can play tackle, and maybe he can play tackle. Once again, it depends on the, the, the scheme and the team. But if I think if you kick him inside the guard, he's going to just eat people for a living. He's going to just, yeah, just throw human beings around like empty garbage cans. Uh, so he's, if I'm inviting him as a guard, he's my guard number one at the moment. If I'm looking at him as a tackle, then yeah, I'm like you, I've got a couple of guys ahead of him. Uh, I think he could play tackle, but I think he would be absolutely like an all pro guard. Um, have you watched Kyer Elam from Florida yet? A little bit. I like him. Uh, he's, I think four for me. Okay. Um, behind, I mean, obviously Gardner, we talked about Stingley, and then uh, I like McDuffie from I like Washington uh, secondary as well. Trent, you know, McDuffie, yeah, McDuffie. The only thing I'm worried about is I think I hope I'm wrong. I think he's going to test mundanely, right? I, he's he's got a kid that I think might go out and run mid four fives, which is not a deal breaker for me, but I think some people will fall out of love at that. Well, but it's I, funny because I actually I just said I liked Washington corners, and then the one guy that went to the Titans, I, I did not like him. Um, what was his name? He ran slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, so Kevin King was the long guy who ran fast, and then the the better football player who ran slow was um. It was, was this that? past year, yeah. I know, I know. I'm I'm seeing him right now in my mind. Really instinctive, but he also battled injuries late. Uh, Elijah, was it? Yeah, Elijah. Uh, yes, Molden, Molden. About Elijah Molden. Molden. I didn't like dislike him as like a person or anything. I just like at watching him play. I just was like, I don't know if that's going to translate. I don't know if he's fast enough to play in the NFL. I don't know if he's athletic enough. I mean, I think I, I a, guess he is for the Chiefs because they're playing Daniel Sorensen at safety. But <laughs> right, he's zone. He's zone guy. Right. Yeah. So it on, schemes everything when it comes to corners. Also, right. So we we've talked. I mean. It, it, it makes sense to to just remind people there are guys who have been pro bowlers who couldn't play for other teams, right? I mean, it depends on what you want to do with your corners. Yeah. I mean, Josh Norman was a guy who even made all pro, some people's all pro list was a multiple pro bowler who couldn't play for other teams. If you ask him to do anything other than sit back and react, you know, read and react, He's dead. He, he, I mean, he's, he can't play man to man. That's why he went from being a guy that people loved to a guy that was fighting to hold on to his job. Because once you get him in a situation where he has to stay with people who run faster than him, which is almost every receiver in the league, I mean, he was four six six coming out of college. He isn't faster now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, no, and, I, sometimes it just you, you get that. 
it's the revitalizing of your, your career. I mean, you know, there are players that they go somewhere and they haven't had success anywhere else. And all of a sudden, Oh, this, it's just like the perfect storm. Right. And, but we have the reverse with a guy like Nami Asma, right? Nami Asma was one of the best that was bizarre. corners in the world. And then a team got him and said, we want you to play zone. And he sucked. Right? <laughs> it wasn't like he just suddenly forgot how to play football. It was just entirely the wrong way to use it. Yeah. I, that was calling yourself the dream team was just a no for me. It, it's football. There's 53 men on a roster. You're not the dream team. You can't create a dream team. That's the whole point of the salary cap era. That's why we have a salary cap. Exactly right. <laughs> um, that's why when people say, oh, you know, such and such, you know, that was – well, first of all, salary cap has made everything, right? You can't have super teams. I mean, no. you look at those 70s Steelers, 70s uh, Cowboys teams, those 60s you know, teams – that I mean, even the Vikings in the '60s, which couldn't get over the hump Super Bowl wise, but look at all the Hall of Famers all over the roster. You just can't do that stuff anymore. Yeah, uh, no, you can't. <laughs> okay, we have to we have to talk quarterbacks. We've kind of almost avoided talking quarterbacks. It feels like so. I have to at least throw a couple. Um, everyone's number one going into the year was Spencer Rattler. My guy was Carson Strong. Uh, we made, we talked a little bit like Desmond Ritter, and we both love Desmond Ritter. So Desmond Ritter was was in my top. Two, three. Um, Grayson McCall is a guy that I, I, I guess he's a third year sophomore. I don't know what you're going to call him, but, uh, but I guess he's technically speaking draft eligible because of, you know, last year's sort of not counting, but he still, it counts when it comes to counting uh, draft eligibility. And then Malik Willis. Um, tell me about your, Quarterbacks, we talked about Ritter. Who else do you like? And and there, is, are there people that you maybe don't like as much as everybody else? Yeah, I like Carson Strong, uh, your guy. Um, he's my number two. You know, I, I see him kind of like a Matt Ryan. You know, yep. I, I think he, yep. he can come Nobody. in right away. That's somebody I would throw right in the fire. Like, if you're drafting yep. Carson Strong, he can come in and he can play. And, and he's either yep. going to be able to play or he's not going to be able to play. But he's ready, I think. Um, yep. You know, if, if he's one of those guys where I think if he just comes to the NFL, you give him three years and it doesn't work out. It's not like he wasn't ready. I think that's just what he is. Right. Um, yeah. Spencer Rattler, to me, it, you kind of touched on it. I mean, I was really impressed with, um, you know, Jalen Hurts and that offense. And Spencer Rattler's not running the offense the same way Jalen Hurts did. Uh, right. And it's like you said, I mean, they're, it's not an easy offense. You still have to make the throws, but. It is an easier offense than you know some of the others, especially it I would say. It presents you with opportunities you know. to make big plays on almost every play if yeah. you're accurate and you get the ball out. Exactly. And so, you know, I think Rattler is being a little overrated. I mean, I get it. You know, Lincoln Riley effect, it happens. Malik Willis right. is number four for me and will probably end up being number three. I like him a lot. Um, you know, I, I think – it's once again, it's we, we have this conversation every year. It's, oh, well, he's from a small school and all that. I mean, aren't we over this already? Like, I, I mean, I thought Steve McNair coming out of Alcorn State would have silenced this by now, but apparently well, not. You know, I mean, him I, can went, go, I can go back with before that. I mean, Augustana gave us Kenny Anderson. Like, there's a long list. Um, Dave Craig went to a school that doesn't exist. <laughs> I didn't say the football program does it. The college, Milton College, no longer exists. That's it's so funny. It was down. Um, I, I mean, don't scout helmets. Isn't that literally scouting 101? Isn't that the oh, first, when you first get your notebook and your pen and your little stopwatch, isn't that the first thing they tell you, don't scout helmets? I I, I know. We, we talked about that early on with Alabama. Um, and now USC, that's what it was, because everyone's like, USC receivers are bad. Alabama offensive tackles, you don't even have to scout them. They're just, they work. I'm like, eh. what? <laughs> <laughs> we have recent examples that could disprove either of those things. So. Yeah, so come on, slow your roll there. Um, no, and then the, you know, I think with, with Willis, it's kind of the same thing, you know, because then you have the people that get too happy about the the small schools just to be a fan of the small school quarterback for me sure i mean i'll have like i said lamar jackson as qb1 patrick mahomes joe burrow kyler murray but i also have trey lance i also have carson wentz you know so i mean yep. it, it's i'm gonna it's gonna be whoever i think it doesn't have anything to do about that but it was really interesting the blowback i got for having trey lance as my number one is people were like <laughs> You're just doing that because you were a Wentz fan. I'm like, no, no, no. I like him more than I liked Wentz. 
I think he's more, more got, talent. Yeah, he's I mean, more he, talent. He's yeah. got immense upside. I mean, he yes. really does. We um, just mentioned Steve McNair. I mean, that's the kind of upside he has. He has that kind of upside. Exactly. He's a and, tough and, guy. He's got a good frame. He's got a really live arm. I, I mean, know. he could throw those balls where it's not just goes far, but it doesn't. He can throw a ball that's like eight feet off the ground, fifty yards. Well, he's essentially thrown to nobody I've ever heard of. No one's in the NFL from that team. The only guy that's worth a mention is um, Ray Dunes. He was the offensive line, one of the offensive linemen. He yeah, is Ray Dunes. and they they have a running back who's in this draft class who I think is going to. You know, I don't know if he's been drafted, but he'll make a team. I mean, there's some guys on that team, but you're right. It's not like he's at Oklahoma. <laughs> well, you know? yeah, and and you know that. Plus, the... he's in an offense where you're under center a fair amount of times. You're reading the whole field at times. Um, you have hard play action where you turn your back on the defense. I mean, he's in kind of a throwback offense, quite frankly. I I think there's a lot. I to like work that. With. You know. Yes, that's a good thing. They have fullbacks. At North at North Dakota State, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, and then watching him, his you know, just watching his film when he can run, he is electric. He he's not even electric. That's not fair to say because yeah. he causes so much damage. Yes, he's, right. he's running like he is a Mack truck. Like, well, once again, Steve McNair, right? Steve McNair, yeah. probably detriment. Steve McNair would run in there like a darn fullback. Uh, probably shouldn't have, but he was just so darn tough. Uh. When I watch Lance, the things that stand out to me, mental and physical toughness, we just talked about. Uh, you know, I watched his basketball tape, too. You ever watch him play basketball? I have not, but I'll definitely have to check that out. I mean, the guy, once again, I mean, we know he's an athlete. But, I mean, yeah. you can see that this guy is like, wow. I mean, this guy could have played pretty high-level college basketball if he wanted to. Um, he's, he's just a, a true great all-around athlete. But you add to that leadership, right? He's a, I mean, on the basketball court, he was like his leadership showed even there. You know, he ran, he ran the basketball team. He's, he's, he's a worker. Like he'll get there. Is he there now? I don't think he's there now. I think that there's things he's just not great at. He's not terrific at a bunch. And if you can disguise coverages at all, you're going to give him trouble right now. But yeah, yeah. How, how you learn, right? You learn by playing, right? So um, <laughs> I get that. I do. Um, I I would have been building the, if it were up to me, and obviously no one ever asked me things. I would have built it so that he gets a couple of series each game, and then a little more time each game, and then after the unless you know Garoppolo's playing you know better than he's ever played before, and he's you know leading the team to championships or something. But anything short of that, we get to the bye week and we make a transition. Yeah. Uh, there's a handful of guys that are ready to just step out of the box day one. Like I said, Russell Wilson, right? There's guys who were just, they're ready. They were ready. They were born ready, practically. Like, they're just ready to go. But for most guys, there's stuff they've never seen before where they find <laughs> in the NFL field, and they're going to look confused and frightened. And, you know, it's going to take a while for that to change. Uh, so are you in a situation where you just afford to lose those games? Some teams are, right? If your team's bad, it doesn't matter as much. But if your team's supposed to be a contender – Starting one in five is not something you can afford to do. So that's why some teams can't just toss that guy out there. I mean, we talked about Kansas City. Not that they would have gone one in five, but some of those games they won are games that young Mahomes might not have won. Yes, now, because of his play style, especially. Right, right. The trade off is that you accelerate his growth, right? But he did a pretty good job of doing that without, I guess, playing that much. So, you know. <laughs> You, Patrick LeBon Mahomes Jr. Um, <laughs> you know, once again, he's a freak of nature. Like, most guys aren't Patrick Mahomes. I think we can all agree to that. Most guys aren't even Russell Wilson. We can all agree to that. So let's – if we're using Derek – I use the Derek Carr scale, right? So for me, if you're Derek Carr or above, I, not only can I win with you, but you can cause us to win games you otherwise would not have won. People yes. – here's a stat that will blow people's minds. Since he's entered the league, Number one in fourth and overtime quarter comebacks is, of course, Matthew Stafford, of all people, right? <laughs> um, right? Despite the fact he's played on nothing but bad teams his whole year, his whole career. Oh, well, now, except for now. Now he's on a good team. Um, Thank God. But, but number two is Derek Carr. He's yeah. number two in fourth quarter and, and overtime comebacks. I believe it. People would never have guessed that. He's mentally and physically, once again, that's the scale, right? So if you are Derek Carr or above, I just need to work on the other parts of my team. 
I, I'm, I'm sad at quarterback. People who think that Derek Carr isn't good enough, I don't know what you're watching. Um, like I, I don't. What did he have to do? What no he, idea. I, I mean, there's people that still think Stafford is just average. I mean, well, those people have never watched him play. I, I mean, if you watched him, play you know, game. the best thing I heard on uh, it was the broadcast. It wasn't even watching the Rams. It was during the Bucks and Cowboys broadcast. When Collinsworth said, I can't wait for, to uh, to watch Matthew Stafford with the Rams against the Bears because, you know, him and, and um, Al Michaels, who I love Al Michaels to death. I think he's phenomenal. Al Michaels is now the king. I mean, I mean, he, he really is. He's and the king. I mean, it's, he's, it's, he's it. He's at the top of the food chain now in terms of, of in terms of play by play men. And there's a big old drop off to whoever's number two. <laughs> yeah, as far as number two, I, I don't even know who I would put. But, you know, basically he was saying he's like, you know, we just really haven't had the pleasure to call many Lions games. So we, we didn't realize how good Matthew Stafford was. And they went back and they watched. And they were like, Collinsworth oh. is like, Matthew Stafford is so good. You take how good you think he is. And he's still way better than that. And it's just yes. like I was I loved it listening to that because I mean, that's during the time. I mean, you could be gushing about Brady, you could be gushing about Dak, and there was a lot of that. But to promote your, you know, promote your game and furthermore to finally put it out there like, hey, you guys don't realize how good Matthew Stafford is. Yep. Um, and then to see that, I mean, he really even played he played really well against the Colts. Uh, a lot of people don't realize the drops that happened in that game. Uh, he hurt his thumb, his surgically repaired thumb. Yes. Uh, he hit right. and he had a fluke interception where it got batted, barely got batted, but we're talking about a big time player in DeForest Buckner that makes that happen. Yes. And yeah. uh, it, it, that pretty much kept the game close, you know, aside yeah. from that, I mean, he really played well. And then the, I mean, I don't have to tell you about the bears game. Everyone saw the bears. I mean, that, yes. that was, that should have been even worse. I mean, they, they really, yeah. that could have been horrible. Uh, yes. And Matt Nagy could have been fired immediately after that game of how bad that could have been. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't Agreed. even, th I have a Agreed. theory that Sean McVay did not want to embarrass him that bad because the, I mean, uh, Peter Trigger came out the next day. It was like, yeah, they only used the first uh, page of their uh, playbook. <laughs> like that's, you yeah. know, it's, uh, but yeah. I, I we were talking about Malik Willis. <laughs> yeah, so so let's let's shove a little bit of Malik Willis and Sam and Sam. So Sam Howell is a guy that I thought people were getting way too high on way too early. And far as frankly, if I were Sam Howell, if I were advising him, I'd say come back. Yes, I agree, hundred percent. Everyone wants that. people to declare early, and not everybody's ready to declare early. I don't know why people have gotten to this mode of everyone's got to declare early. Right? It helps some guys, it hurts other guys. He's one of those guys that would be hurt, in my mind, by declaring early. He really should come back. He has a chance to be QB1 next, the, you know, the following year. Everyone's been comparing him for whatever reason. I guess it's the scruff and the build uh, <laughs> to Baker Mayfield. Um, oh, my God. Who does not? Oh, my. it's always Baker Mayfield. It's man. always Baker Mayfield. The guy he uh, reminds me most of, though I think he's better, is actually a South Carolina quarterback. I mean, Steven Garcia from a few years back. Um so if you haven't watched him, you know, go back on the the hmm. yacht you can pull up Steven Garcia. But he's he's got some he's got some real ability to drive the ball deep down the field. Once again, he throws a pretty deep ball. And some people have taken from that to think that he's ready to go. But he doesn't do a great job of reading defenses. He doesn't do a great job of anticipating those those slants that where the person gets tackled right away because you didn't anticipate the throw correctly. If you anticipate the throw correctly and lead the person, they still keep picking up yards. Like he has to get better at that. If you because think of how many slants you're going to throw at the next level. Um, yeah. You know, you're not, think of all the hall of fame quarterbacks we've seen the last few years of all the guys that are amazing at throwing the slant Peyton Manning, right? Slants for days, like slants. You could make up just, you could make up nothing but a slant reel of Peyton Manning that would account for 30,000 yards. Right. Um, Ain't nothing but a slant. I mean, if you are great at throwing – the slant, if properly timed, is actually the most difficult pass to defend in football, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jared Goff couldn't throw it, and it killed me. But Matthew Stafford, right. you know, he puts it right on the money. Out in front, right. you can run with it. The whole point of it is to get yards after the catch once you run. 
you know, it's right. But the problem is you have quarterbacks that throw behind and it's just like, and you see that, um, you know, at the yep. combine, you know, the natural arm ability and just, you know, realizing how you should throw that football. And I mean, you Drew know, Brees, Tom yeah. Brady, like all the guys that we know are going to be in the first ball hall of famers were all amazing at throwing the slant. They weren't okay at it. They weren't decent at it. They would kill you. They, were, they would kill you with the slant. So that that should not be where you're you're struggling, and it's where he struggles to me. Um, I agree with that. And so until he gets my better, issue with how until he gets better at anticipating those crossers and slants, I mean those are those are supposed to be easy money throws, right? Those that's the you know what's the old say? You don't go broke picking up change. If 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 you can get to if you can get to he's deadly on those, then I'll start talking about him as a first rounder. Um, okay. We talked about uh, oh uh do you, have you watched any of the tight ends yet? Um just one or two, I think. I want to say Jaleel Billingsley from okay. uh, Bama. Bama, right? One shocker. Um <laughs> yeah, right. I mean I watch a lot of Bama, I can't help it. And then everybody does. That's the um, no reason to apologize. Owen or Otten from uh, Washington. I don't really love the tight ends in this class. Kate, so Kate Otten, first of all, you're watching the wrong tight ends. Not wrong tight ends. I mean, I mean, watch them all. But, um, okay, um, Billingsley, is he draft eligible? I have to go back and check. I Well, I, no, he, you're right, he is. He is. It's the other kid. I he, love the other guy more, to be honest with you. Right, right, right. That's the one who's not draft eligible. He's the, that guy you saw, right? A low year. I don't even know how to say yeah. his name. I think right, right. I think he's tr- a true sophomore. Yeah, I think you know Bill- exactly what I'm talking about. The Hawaiian I know, right, that thing. kid. I, yeah, he's a no offense to Billingsley, but that's yeah, that's the guy. I like. Well, and that's my thing. Like Billingsley is my one by default because I haven't watched a ton. Um, but I like I draft that guy tomorrow. Hello, you're. I I I don't even know. I can't even think of his name. I just know it's like Hawaiian, and I know that <laughs> Bryce Young <laughs> loves this guy. Loves it. Yes, Bryce Young clearly loves him. I mean. <laughs> You could tell that when they were both on scout team, Bryce Young was just killing people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's that's- my QB1 whenever he comes out because he is just I- – I love him. I-, I think he is – he's phenomenal. I'm. That's horrifying. Alabama was doing everything they were doing without a top quarterback. Without, right. They were doing this with – now they're getting the, these guys. With the A.J. McCarrens and the uh, – <sighs> boys of the world that's terrifying and i like bama so imagine how that is for people that hate them oh if you're an auburn fan it's just soul crushing yes like oh god now they're getting quarterbacks who can actually play you know yeah it's like oh what, what is this you know but <laughs> no i'm gonna look uh, his name up right now because i need to know alabama right tight end. but i'm gonna hit you with some tight ends to add to your your little watch list or whatever uh including jalen wiedemeyer so i've watched a lot of texas a m and once again they ask him to do all the tight end stuff he Cameron won. Latu, that's who it was. Yes, that's his name, Latu, right. Um, and I think that guy's just at least like 19 or something. It's scary. Um, I know he's young. Um, Jalen Wiedermeyer, Texas A&M. Big frame, moves well, not blazing fast, probably high 4.6s, low 4.7s, but fast enough. Can do it all. Can block, can catch the ball outside of his frame, uh, can go up, high point the ball, can – Snatch low balls because, you know, he's – I mean, some of his quarterback play hasn't always been awesome. Um, but – so he gets a chance to do some sort of bad ball drills even in games. But he's uh, he's really well-rounded. He's not the blazer that some of the other tight ends like Craig Duklich at, at UCLA is faster, but he's not the blocker that Wiedermeyer is. I like Cole Turner also. That's um, my boy Carson Strong's tight end at Nevada. Um if you don't mind undersized tight ends, right? This guy is a blazer. Tyreek James of Tulane. Go back and watch the Oklahoma Tulane game and watch him abusing safeties and linebackers <laughs> of Oklahoma. He's abusing Oklahoma's safeties and linebackers. Most guys can run. I'm a He's huge a- Kylan Granson fan, so I don't care about. Uh, oh, well, if you don't care uh, about size, then yeah, yes. You don't, no. then pro- I promise you, watch Tyreek James at, at Tulane, and then we'll come back and talk about it. What's uh, the kid at Bowling Green as well last year? Oh, right. I liked uh, him too. Yeah. So you don't mind like H backy, right? You loved Ossie no, Ossie. Not. So you don't care about size. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Right, because you said you loved Ossie Ossie. I should have taken it from that. Because uh, mm-hmm. like, a lot of people were down on Ossie Ossie because when he, he didn't, you know, he measured out at like six, two and a half. And 
I mean, I prefer you're not 5'11 as a tight end. I know that's (laughs) happened before because they, you know, they were trying to make my guy Jalen Samuel. um, Yeah, right. Well, so the last two really short tight ends, right? Jalen Samuels, and then you may not remember this guy, but they always always draft tight ends for no reason with the Patriots. They drafted a guy named Garrett Mills out of Tulsa. Hmm. And Garrett Mills, I think, was 5'11 and three quarters, Uh, 26 or something. But my God, he had great hands. But he was just too small. Like it didn't work. Um, yeah, but no, that's just that kid caught everything, man. Um, let me see. We talked about him. We talked about him. Um, have you seen Traylon Burks at Arkansas yet? Thinking so wide receivers. Um, yes, he didn't make my top five because I was just ranking five. Um, gotcha. But I, I, oh no, he did. No, he's four at Arkansas. Oh. He's uh, right below George Pickens, and then I have. Uh, Jalen Tolbert at five. I'm a big Tolbert fan. I have Dobbs ahead of all but – well, I mean, I've got Alave ahead because I love Alave. I think Alave yeah. is be Robert Woods at the next level. Um, but I love Romeo Dobbs. I think Romeo Dobbs has a chance to be a healthier um, version of a guy like Tyro Williams. Or um, I'm hoping – I mean, he's great. Once again, great. At, probably not. He's not as tall. His entire Williams is say six four, I think, and he's probably like six two and a half. But he tracks the ball beautifully. I mean, I don't know if there's a better ball tracker in this class. I really love Jahan Dotson. Also, I have him in my top top five. Um, I'm not quite as high on Garrett Wilson as everybody, but once again, I said it, that might just be me. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna keep watching him, and maybe maybe I'll figure out what I'm not seeing that everyone else is seeing with him. I liked Justin Ross for a while. Um, yes, but you know, from Clemson, right? They just need to figure out, you know, how to get the, their quarterback situation is up in what it was. So I yes. thought, you know, Ugalele or whatever his name is, I I thought he was going to be really good. So I guess and he I will was, be. You know. He's nineteen. I mean, what's good? No, he, no, I thought he'd be good like right away. So I mean, I you know, oh. I'm a little surprised. It, it sucks though because you're going to have Justin Ross, who's now like, well, right. His draft stock gets hit. Fifth, yeah, now, he's a fifth year senior, so this is it for him. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna hate too much be, like I said, like with Michigan, because I do feel like Shea Patterson totally killed Diamond Peoples Jones draft stock. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And a lot of people, not just him. I mean uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was not a fan of him. <laughs> no, not no, a fan no, of no, him. No, 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 no. Well, once again, I know stuff about him. We'll talk more off air, but it wasn't quite to the point of John Paul Menzel, but it was it's so light. Some of his life. Well, he wasn't even that good. I don't understand. No, right, 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 right. But he, we'll, once again, we'll talk. We'll talk more off air about. about yeah. him. But I know some stuff about Mr. Patterson. I'll, I'll leave it. I'll, I'll put it this way: He enjoyed his college years. So I'll just leave it at that. I see. Okay, I mentioned Romeo Dobbs. I love him. If you haven't watched him yet, well, if you're watching Carson Strong, you kind of have to watch him, I guess, because uh, that's yeah. his target. Um, I, I think the I don't know if there's a better like I said deep ball tracker in the, in the whole the whole draft class. Um, I'm leaving you a quarterback that you haven't watched. You need to watch it's Phil Jerkovic, the Notre Dame transfer who's been killing it at Boston College. Uh, is he left-handed? That's a good question. Is he? He might be. He's a. He's I got thought a, he was left-handed. I think I, he is. I've seen him. Yeah, I think he's I've got a big. Him. He's got a big arm too. He's the person that. And once again, he's not. I'm not saying he's been Roethlisberger, but there's some Roethlisberger esque qualities there. Big kid with a big arm. Uh, we'll keep him around a little bit. He's probably a you know four eight, high four sevens. You know, but he's he move a little bit. But he's he. The big thing is his ability just to drive the ball. You know, from even from almost any like even when his feet aren't completely set or when he's a little bit off balance. I mean, not you know not Mahomes because no one can do that. But but yeah, like so a, like that ability to to not to be a little bit off off platform and still deliver a strong ball. I'm going to give you one of my favorite wide receivers that, uh, unfortunately, his quarterback play has been a putrid this year, but I love this kid, is uh, Tyrese Freifogel, Ty Freifogel at Indiana. Uh, unfortunately, Michael Penix has been Not about, good. about a 40% passer this year. So that's kept people from really being able to see what he can do. Uh, but I, I urge you to check him out if you if you haven't already. Um, yeah, I'll- I'll have to give him a watch. I mean, it'll be hard because I, I watched Penix last year thinking he was going to come out, and I'm like, well, that's tough. Um, I feel bad. Obviously, you know, he's he's in college, and, you know, he's yep. the starter, but 
I'm not trying to hate on a guy, but I really had a hard time watching him. It, it's, it's. I don't know if it's that he's not 100 percent physically or if he's just pressing, but he's he's a guy with a, a level of talent that isn't ideal anyway. Let's just be yeah. clear, right? But he can win, right? I mean, he can if he if he stays. They got to keep it simple for him. Quite frankly, they need to design runs, throws off of you know zone read stuff, zone throws off of RPOs, throw throws that are set up, scheme up. You got to scheme up throws for him. It's just that simple. You got to scheme up throws for him. Uh, let me give you a couple more guys if, if you haven't checked out to check out. Uh, Jordan Strahan at South Carolina, a uh, guy, former Georgia State guy, uh, transferred up to a Power Five, and I think he's going to have a really big. Uh, last year there. Uh, always you got to have an interior lineman from Iowa. So you haven't already been watching Tyler Lindebaum. Enjoy. Oh, he's my, he's my number one. I, I he's have, everybody's number one. Yeah, I have w- one rule of thumb. If it's an Iowa offensive lineman, I'm interested. <laughs> I have – I like I, that is the one – I think that's literally the one – uh, school that I will consistently I don't scout the helmet so to speak but, but I will give them a shot you know I give them right, but, first but you at, least, you at least check them all out right yeah well I just remember you know George Kittle talking with him and he was like if you can't block you don't play at Iowa it's that nope. simple and that's yep. why and it just it feels like just talking with him and it was years ago I you know when he was coming out of Iowa um, the vibe I got is that Iowa is that program that's just like no nonsense, no yes. to the grindstone. Yes. And, you know, I'm seeing that, you know, Alaric Jackson. Now he's being, you know, called AJ Jackson uh, with the Rams. Uh, this is a UDFA. They spent a lot of money on uh, the most yep. money of anybody in the UDFA class. They liked him. I expect yep. him to be a practice squad guy. He made the 53. Yep. Um, so, you know, I feel like they're just, there's constantly guys you have, you know, Scherf and, um, you know, there's another guy on their, their roster right now, uh, from Iowa, but I mean, I can't even name them all, but, uh, you know, they, they just constantly have guys that they just oh, pump out. Wisconsin um, and Iowa build their program around their offensive line. Oh, Worfs. That I, duh, forgot about, right. um, I, I love him. He was, yeah. he was my favorite tackle in that draft. I yeah. loved him. So, well, first of all, I wrestled in high school and in college. So I always give an extra check mark to guys who are wrestling champs. Um, and, but also, I mean, when you combine his rare level of athletic ability, the Iowa, you know, I mean, he's truly an Iowa player in so many ways, wrestling champion, you know, Iowa, Iowa through and through. Um, and he was also a really good track and field guy, just because shot put guy. I mean, everything he was, he was, he was everything, you know, like he was all the stuff I love. He was all of that. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't love him more. Yeah, he's he was my favorite coming out too. Um, let me give you a couple more guys. Uh, running back Kevin Harris, South Carolina. Um, well, the guy I'm comparing him to was a guy you just saw last year, a, a guy you watched a lot, Khalil Herbert. He's really reminds me a lot of Khalil. So if you liked him, you'll like Kevin Harris. I got him on my uh, my watch list here. Um, you've probably checked out Charleston Rambo already. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, I know Charleston Rambo. I yeah, thought he's come out before. Yeah, so. well, he he's probably wishing he did. Um, here's a fun little. I don't know what to call him. Um, space player, mini. You know, you know all these guys who are like Glenn. Well, Glenn Milburn's way before your time, but. Joe Washington, way, way back in the days, coming out of um, Oklahoma, then later Glenn Milbert at Stanford. These guys were kind of running backs and kind of wide receivers all at the same time. Uh, Anaya Smith at Texas A&M. Obviously, you have to figure out what you're going to do with him, but he plays, you know, scat back, slot receiver, all of that fun stuff. He's worth checking out. Um, Clemson has two defensive ends that have a chance. Uh, Xavier... Thomas is the guy that's finally starting. Xavier Thomas, yeah. After underachieving his first four years in the program, finally as a redshirt senior, it looks like he's finally putting it together. And the the other kid, the younger kid, is KJ Henry. I say younger. I guess he's like a year younger, but he's not young. But I'm gonna give you a couple of running backs. Uh, not running backs. Well, a couple of them too. But um, uh, linebackers. Carson Wells at Colorado. I would take him. He'll probably be in the third. I would take him in the second, but he'll probably be in the third round. So let's get him in the third, and they're gonna get a tremendous bargain steal value pick a term who was was he from 
I'm trying to think of the guy that I really liked last year. He's on the Lions. I think he's going to start at linebacker at some point. Um, I don't know if he was at Colorado or not. Oh, wait. I think I know who you're talking about. Um, um, Barnes? Yeah, Derek Barnes from Purdue. But, yes, Purdue, I loved okay. him. Yeah. Derek Barnes. Loved him. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to be really good. I think that's why they, they moved on from Tavai, and I think that's why they're trying to trade Jamie Collins. I think they're tired of feeling yes. like they have to play him because they're paying it. Because they're paying him a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, that another... was not their choice. Yeah, I know. This Let me give you a couple... like, what were you thinking? Right. Let me give you a couple of pass rushers. Uh, Amari Barno from Virginia Tech. Uh, he's just missed my top 100, but he's he'll probably be in it before it's all said and done. And Sam Williams from Ole Miss, once again, just outside my top 100, but he'll probably get there before it's all said and done. Since you like wide receivers, Ronnie Bell from Michigan is a guy that has caught my attention early this year, along with – I mentioned Xavier Hutchinson. They're, they're really close to a get together in my wide receiver rankings. Um, they're not in the top five, and they're not they're, – they're probably going to be in, in the top ten when it's all said and done, but they're in my top 100. Uh, Javon Hicks, since you like Syracuse uh, – sorry, since, since you like Cincinnati safeties, uh, Javon Hicks, they have yet another safety. Um, endless – stream of safeties from Syracuse, Cincinnati. I love because seeing that. They're both um, cities in um, in ancient Rome, right? The Roman Empire, right? <laughs> Syracuse and Cincinnati, Cincinnati and Syracuse. Um, for those who are, you know, fans of Roman history. Okay. Um, there's always going to be an Alabama safety. So Jordan Battle's going to get drafted higher than he should uh, because of the statement effect. Oh, oh, one more running back. C.J. Verdell, right? I've uh, heard of him. Yeah, well, he's he's really, really good. Is he Coastal Carolina? Oh, that's Oregon. That's Mar- uh, Marable is the guy that you're thinking about probably. No, they have a new kid, though. I mean, not new. He's a junior. But C.J. Verdell, you said? Yeah, C.J. Verdell's from, from uh, Oregon. Okay, I don't know why. Yeah, I probably was thinking. But he, he came out this year, right? Yeah, Mar- Marable's, Marable's on it. On it on, who's Ross Reese on? Uh, yeah. Panthers, maybe? Huh, I don't even know what I'm thinking of then. But it's okay. Well, no, maybe that that was the case. Maybe that that's what it was. I don't know. But yeah, Mar- Marable's in the league. But but the kid they have a new they have another. I mean, they always have good players. Coastal Carolina has. <laughs> don't be fooled, kids. They have some really good football. Players. Well, and um, likely is Memphis in my top is, five. Memphis was running backs are insane. I mean, they really just they're. It's a factory. I keep I keep Turn saying this. Um, yeah. like it was funny. Like I don't know if I'm. I probably wasn't the first one to sound the alarm, but. I was really, really high on Daryl Henderson. He's my number one running yes. back in that class. Yes. Um, really high on Tony Pollard. Really high. Yes. Um, you know, this past year or last year, I want to say, Antonio Gibson was my third running back in the draft. I mean, I loved him. And people are like, he's yep. not going to be able to make the transition. I'm like, he he was a running back. He right. Was what do you mean? Like, 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 like I don't understand where he's that going came from. back. He's, just, and then he's, not, he's not making year, a transition. He's going back home. Gamewell was a, a top four running back for me in this class. So I love Gamewell. And then they have Brandon Thomas now, who's going to be a, just a freak. I mean, Thomas has a chance to be as good as any of them. Uh, he's a freshman right now. So yeah. you'll so have to watch him. But Here's the Coastal Carolina players who are in my top 150. Cornerback to Jordan Strong is in my top 150. Oh, got to add him. Tight end Isaiah Likely is in my top 150. Their new running back is a kid named Shamari Jones. Um, he's not in my top 150, but he's I'm, I like what I see. I'm gonna keep watching more. Um, a guy who just missed my top 150 is their tight, their best. Uh, I already said tight end. Their wide receiver is kid named Javon Highly. Between highly likely, they always make lots of highly likely jokes. But um, I mean, those guys could play for anybody. Yeah, what happened? Like, how did this happen? Because the I, I saw this. <laughs> I saw this early on, and I just – I don't even understand it. Coastal Carolina beat Kansas, and I was sitting there like, yep. Kansas is that bad? They just lost at home. No, I mean, they're not that bad. Coastal's that good. Coastal beat a lot of people, man. <laughs> well, they were that bad. They didn't Coastal win a game that it, <laughs> they would They would hand L's to a lot. They would – in the top 15 – That was the they, first game of the year, though. So we didn't know right. what they were, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, Jamie – I forget his last name – coach of that oh um, Chart- chartwell or whatever uh, uh, jamie chatwell chatwell yeah 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 he i don't know he just has done a really great job and mm-hmm. credit he <clears throat> built a culture of fun first of all right 
he do they grind? Sure, they grind, but they don't build their culture. It's not once again, it's not Iowa. They don't build their culture on grinding. They they build their culture on fun, but we have to grind to have fun, right? Yes, yes. So they have a beach yeah. parties. They have a tiki lounge. They have professional wrestling night, right? They have, they have uh, the mullets going on. Yeah, he they have has the a mullet. mullet. Uh, McCall has a mullet. Yep. Um, one of the defense players has a mullet. It's crazy. Right. They build around. So they start with, like, right? The fun is how they lead, and then, but you got to grind to have the fun. They have a safety who's you remember? You just mentioned Dan Sorensen. You want to see Dan Sorensen basically reincarnated? Watch Alex spill him. I'm, I'm not even joking. He's slow. He's white. He's almost exactly the same size, but he makes plays all the time. It's like, how is he doing it? But, well, is Sorensen really making plays though? He is. I know you people uh, like to jokes or whatever, but he makes he, he he gets his hands on footballs. He forces fumbles. He blocks punts. He's doing it somehow. I should, mean, he shouldn't be playing over uh, Juan Thornhill though. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm I'm a big Juan Thornhill guy. So yeah, I'm with you. I mean, there should be a way to get them both on the field. I mean, you you're playing nickel all the time anyway. Well, yeah, they just they don't like to do it because they want to. I forget the the corner they got. They want to use him. Um, Mike Hill, uh, Mike Hughes. Oh, let me I'm not him. hating on that, by the way. I think Mike Hughes makes a lot of sense. Yeah, he revitalized his but, career. But I'm saying if I'm if I'm playing, if I'm playing five DBs anyway. Um, Tyron Matthew is going where he feels like he should go, right? Because that's what how he plays anyway. He's basically yeah. reading. He's wherever he decides to go, he goes. Maybe he's in the slot. Maybe he's outside. Maybe he's playing like a nickel linebacker. Whatever he does, what he does. Thornhill is a true free safety. I'm playing him a true free safety. That's what he is. Sorensen is kind of almost like a linebacker ish type, but he he can play strong safety. He's in the box. He belongs in the box. And sometimes he can play deep half if it's the right situation. He doesn't have to run with anybody. And he'll, uh, you mentioned, not, he saying, not he'll use, Mike Hughes, he can play outside, he can play in the I slot. I said Mike Hilton too. <laughs> yeah, no. And, uh, the two of them are actually very similar players. Uh, yeah. So I can see how it goes. But he can, play outside, he can play in the slot. Sometimes he'll play even dime back if we're going to a dime set. But the idea of not having one thrown on the field is – isn't logical to me. Um, that that's a failure. Okay, let me talk about a couple more guys who I think are going to play at the next level, who are on the roster at Coastal Carolina. CJ Brewer is an undersized three technique, but I have a soft spot for undersized three techniques anyway. But super disruptive. I mean, this kid's got get off for days, and they've got a pass rusher who's pretty good. I'm trying to remember his name. Gunter. Uh, Jeremy Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Gunter. So those are all guys that I think are going to play at the next level at Coastal Carolina. And they probably got guys I haven't seen yet, right? I haven't watched them that much this year. But these are the guys I already had on my watch list that I knew about. This is, this is a legit program. And so it's coaching. It's the fact that they're in a talent-rich environment. That part of North Carolina has a lot of kids that, you know, obviously most of them end up in the ACC. Some of them go other places. But the ACC doesn't have room for all of them, right? <laughs> Jer- Jer- so Jeffrey Gunter is my number 149. So he just made my 140. So he just, just barely made it. So he's number 149 on my, my prospect list. But um, this is a team that would give a lot of people trouble, right? Yeah, no, I definitely. I don't think it's, like I said, a fluke or anything like that. No, absolutely not. I've been really impressed with them. I'm just, it was, I was recalling when it happened, you know, that first year, their first game of the year, I knew Kansas wasn't going to be great, but I didn't expect them to get just completely just blown out of their own building. And I was like, you know what? This Coastal Carolina team is legit. And I, I, we found out. That's what we found out. So, you know, it's, I mean, Credit to uh, to Jamie Chad. Well, I don't know if what's going to happen there. I don't know if he's going to leave or not. Um, but you know, I do think it, it'll be interesting because I mean, if he stays there, he could turn Coastal Carolina into you know keep them as this power program. Um, but he could also get picked up by a huge school, and that's entirely possible. So, <clears throat> you know, that's what I would say there, and then. 
Yeah, I think just uh, you know, some guys. Uh, I mean, Demarvin Leal or Leal uh, from Texas A and M. I like. Um, you know, kind of looking at it, like Darian Kennard, uh, interior offensive line, Zion Johnson uh, from Boston College. We've talked about Kenny Green already. Um, you know, just some some guys there. But uh, yep. Um, I'll I'll hit you with one or two more, and then we'll close this sucker out, which I said like half an hour ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so um, I, I I threw Justin Rice at you. I think once more, Utah State. Check him out. Uh, University of Tennessee Chattanooga has a guy who's kind of like a five tech, but he's playing defensive tackle. Uh, he's legitimately probably about six, three and three quarters and about 290-ish, probably 294, somewhere in that range. His name's Devonsha Marshall. And I know people don't usually watch a lot of Tennessee Chattanooga, but make yourself. Um, <laughs> this kid's got it. He's legit. He's a legit player. He's just outside of my top 150, but I think he's gonna. He has a real chance to play. Another smaller school kid, uh, Dakobe Bryant, because Durant. Sorry, not Bryant. Kobe Bryant. See, yes, I talked about Kobe Bryant, the corner from Cincinnati earlier. Dakobe Durant from South Carolina State. Uh, if you saw, if you watched the Clemson game, you saw that this guy was covering. Speaking of your boy Justin Ross, he was covering with no help, right? No, no safety help. He was covering those receivers from Clemson. Mono a mono, head up. Uh, Kwame Jones, defensive end slash outside linebacker from Fresno State. It's a guy I think you should check out. And my number two center is a kid named Tyler Orsini from Nevada. He's undersized. Other people don't like him as much as I do. But when I watched him, I kept thinking of Jeff Saturday. About the same build, really smart, takes charge of everything. Um, He'll probably need to put on some weight just like Jeff Saturday did. (laughs) He doesn't lose the way and always worry about him. You know, I hope he doesn't, I hope he's at least in the two nineties, you know, but he's, he's a smaller guy, but he's really good. I'm going to give you a couple of small school quarterbacks that are ballers. Uh, that you watch out for Eric Berrier from Eastern Washington. You mentioned guys who throw on the run. Well, this guy throws on the run. People know about Rattler. He's more accurate than Rattler. About the same size, not as fast, but better, more accurate, more accurate. Barrier, so, that sounds so yep. familiar. Well, he's been there forever. Um, he's uh, he's been there a lot. He took them to the to the he's taken them to the final four of the FCS twice, and he's a terrific football player. Terrific football player. Uh, California kid, I think Di- Diamond Bar. I don't don't quote me on that. So I can't remember which high school, but and he's a Southern California kid. Found his way up to Eastern Washington. And he's been killing it. Uh, they've had a lot of good quarterbacks at Eastern Washington. Most of them end up in. Um, the CFL, quite frankly. Uh, shout out to Bo Levi Mitchell. But uh, this guy has a chance. Uh, he's, I hope he, once again, I hope he wins the way. And he's listed as six foot one, which I'm almost sure is a lie. But I think he's at least six foot ish, at least, you know, so be close to that, about 203, 204 pounds. But he's got, other than just being not as tall as people, some people care about, he's just a baller, man. Smart. Accurate, throws the occasional pick because he really trusts his receivers, but it's not because of a lack of accuracy. It's just like he really always wants to give his guys a chance. He, he'll put it up there sometimes. He's like, I might not win this, you know, and this guy does it. But, um, but he's really, really good. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum is Cole Kelly, who's listed at 6'7, probably a legit 6'6 six, six and a quarter, um, from southeastern Louisiana. This kid, um, May have the strongest arm in the entire draft class. Wow. The strongest arm in the – this kid can throw a ball through a car wash and it won't get wet. This kid <laughs> throws balls that can bend, like, the space-time continuum, my friend. Now, sometimes he needs to take a little bit off of it. Like, I've seen him every once in a while. It's like, hey, you know, on that little little in route, you plan to throw it that hard, you know. <laughs> You're going to hurt somebody. But, yes, he, he's got a canon. I don't. I can't anybody else whose arm is as strong as his in this draft class. His arm is ludicrous strong. He needs it's it's Josh Allen level that kind of arm. It's that kind of arm. Um, he's a really big kid. He's a big kid. Two forty three, six six and change. He's a, enormous, and he's got a cannon. 
Um, people always bring up, you know, level competition, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but he's also playing with guys that are that low. You know, like it's not like he's at Oklahoma or USC or Michigan. He's in Southeast Louisiana. Yeah, so, I, I never put too much stock into that. I don't competition put stock into competition. It. You know? Right. The only time I put stock into it is if your team is head and shoulders above the competition you're playing. I mean, then it kind of sort of makes sense. But, you know, if you're at Southeast Louisiana, you're not playing with a bunch of killers. You know, I mean, there's a few guys on that roster who are good. Don't get me wrong. But when you're playing Sam Houston State, they've got more talent than you. You know, so <laughs> Sam Houston State, well, you know, if you're going to truly go down a rabbit hole, I'll just take you through all the guys they've got. Um, there's some. There's some really good FCS guys this year. If you just want to get truly, truly just overwhelmed with information, ask me to just unload, but I won't. Um, there's there's going to be – last year I felt like because of COVID-19, it was a really bad year for small school guys, right? Very bad, yes. Low number in the last few years was, was drafted from smaller schools, and HBCUs got absolutely skunked. Not a single guy from an HBCU got drafted. I think there's at least two or three guys from HBCUs that got drafted this year. There's a pass rusher I like. John Maine Martin is a guy a lot of people have talked about. And but the guy I think has the best chance is a kid I just talked to talked about from South Carolina State uh, because he's a cover corner. And that translates. Like I don't care what level you're playing. If you can run and turn and make plays on the ball, like that translates. Like a great example is what? Um, Dominic Rogers Carmine went number seven overall from Tennessee State. Seven overall. Um, he won't have that won't happen for him. He's not, he's not first of all, he's not six foot two and change, which obviously helped Dominic Rogers Cromarty. He's you know normal size, 5'11, probably about 191, but he's a really good football player. Um, so Jacoby Durant, and I think, don't quote me on this, I think he is a cousin or a nephew or something of the Durants, the other like Justin and what was the other one's name? Darian. The guys that from Carolina, from North Carolina, I think he's their like their cousin or their nephew or something. Gotcha. He's, he's from a the, a family of athletes. That's uh, always good. Yeah. It well, if nothing else. You understand certain stuff. Um, my I got my master's degree and I was a graduate assistant at University of Illinois. Um, but I'm still very realistic about that team. They have exactly one guy I think has a real chance to do something at the next level, um, and his name is Owen Carney Jr. He's a defensive end, and he's. He's not super bendy, so you may not like him, but he's got really good use of his hands. Like he's got good hand usage. He's powerful. Um, if he tests well, he has a chance to go probably, I'm thinking mid-rounds. I think the, the, the market for him probably starts in the late fourth and you know extends down to the sixth, but he's, he showed me some things. Uh, let me give you anyone else um, that makes sense to mention to you. A couple of FCS kids, Jace Lewis, the linebacker from Montana, Pierre Williams, running back from Sacramento State. I won't bore you with some more of them. Oh, here's a guy. I, I just basically came onto my radar. <clears throat> running back, Calvin Tyler Jr., Utah State. He's, in, once again, another of those grad transfer kids. So he's an older guy. Some people won't like the fact that he's 23. But you mentioned you like bowling balls, right? He's that. 5'8 and change, 211 pounds. Um, the first guy never gets him down. I know everyone says that, but it's true of Cal. <laughs> um, if, 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 the first guy is just there for practice, basically, right? That guy is either going to get juked or bounce off or a little bit of both. Uh, he's got a little bit of wiggle to him, but he definitely is not averse to running into people. He doesn't mind running into people. I, 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 he probably should run into people a little less than he does, but he's strong, and he wants to sort of flaunt that, but he's got, got a little bit of wiggle, and he's got – you know, not blazing speed. He's not as fast as some of the guys, the running backs I named earlier, but he's got, my guess is he's probably a, a, a low, to, you know, four, five, four, you know, plus or minus, probably right around that range. But yeah, that's a guy that um, I, I caught my eye recently as well. Uh, is there any underrated or under the radar or whatever guys that you want to shout out before we, for real, close it out this time? I mean it. Um, I'm going to just shout out, uh, old KU Jayhawk that, uh, transferred Andrew Parchment. Watch out for him. Um, I like him. I think he's somebody that he's going to be that guy that, you know, I know my guy, Devin Jackson, uh, shouted him out before the season. He may not have the most production this season. I don't exactly love where that program's going right now, (laughs) but I will say this. I think people are going to go back. They're going to look at the film, you know, 
right around the time, right before the draft, people, when they get super bored and they're like, you know what, I need to go back and I need to like reevaluate everything that I know. And right. <laughs> they're going to go and they're going to be re-ranking Andrew Parchment. I think, you know, they're going to go back. If they have to watch Kansas, they will. Uh, they will go and they will see this kid can play. Um, yep. He really was a stellar receiver at KU. Um, did not get enough credit, did not get enough opportunities. Um, just was really a tough, you know, obviously didn't want him to transfer, but can't really blame him. They didn't win a game. So, you know, I, I, I feel for him and, uh, I'm hoping he, you know, turns it up, uh, you know, with Florida state, but I think he's somebody yeah. at the very least he could be like, and I know this isn't the greatest example cause he hasn't done anything with the Steelers, uh, but Rico Bussy blew up in camp oh, uh, yeah. Rico Bussy had a great preseason I could see parchment coming out of nowhere we had a similar thing with the KU Jayhawk before as receiver Steven Sims who forced his way onto the roster yes. with Washington I, I understand he got Washington. cut but yep. uh he was not the fastest guy was yep. not the quickest guy did not have yep. the best hands wasn't the best route runner wasn't the tallest by any stretch but he made it you know and he was there for what two three years so yeah. I, I feel like parchment with the size, with the speed. I mean, he is that like everything that Steven Sims wasn't like parchment is. And I really do appreciate Steven Sims and what he was able to do for the program. But parchment is more of an NFL built receiver. So that's a guy that I would definitely say underrated. I'd throw him out there. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I, I don't want to get too much into it and throw <laughs> a name out there that I'd, I'm not really fully invested in. But Parchment's a guy that uh, I really – it's not just like a, a you know a strong feeling about like because I like him, um, but I, I just feel like you know when I watched him, there were a lot of times where if this guy stayed at KU regardless, uh, he was going to get draft um, attention. He may not have the most because it's a very good wide receiver class. It seems like every year it is now. Um, but he, he, could, he could go uh, fourth through the seventh round. We will see. Um, kind of like you were bringing up uh, for a few different players. It really depends on how he tests. I mean, if this guy yep. tests out of this world, he'll shoot himself way up there. We all, we, we know that a team will bite. If he were to run, like, you know, say he turns into uh Burshad Perriman and runs like a four, what, whatever <laughs> they reported there, four, one, four, nine four, or, whatever. Three, two or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Four, yeah. Three, he broke the record apparently at his pro day. I, I don't know how much I, I read into that, but you know, he, he's fast. Don't get me wrong. He is fast, um, but and I don't his dad didn't play in the NFL. So he's got those yeah. two things going for him. But unfortunately, just because your dad played doesn't mean you, you can catch the football. Another, uh, um, another player. I don't know if he'll get any recognition. I don't, I don't know if he's a draft prospect, so to speak, uh, a guy mm -hmm. that you'll be looking at, but um, just cause you bet your dad, I'll throw him out there. Another Kansas Jayhawk. Um, uh, well, now I just totally <laughs> dropped the name. Um, he, he played for the Cardinals, the Rams, I think the Giants, uh, Kwame Lasseter. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Kwame Lasseter's kid. I felt I felt for him because during his time at KU, Kwame passed away, um, right. which is really unfortunate. Uh, he's Kwame Lasseter the second, I want to say. Yeah, yes. Kwame Lasseter the Correct. second. I don't think he's the third. So, yeah, Kwame Lasseter the second. He is right now the number one receiver at KU. Um, he's one of those super seniors, I believe. So this is for like his last year. Um, not necessarily a draft prospect, but a high priority UDFA potentially that could help you. Gotcha. I seem kind of like an Andre Roberts, if that makes sense, who yeah. has yeah, carved yeah. out a role in the league, you know? Uh, yes. And he's one of the better kick returners in football. So. Yep. And there's a place so. for I mean, a guy who plays special teams and is fast and is willing to do essentially whatever he's asked. There's a place for that guy. There yeah. always will. Absolutely. So those are, uh, those are all the guys I'll, I'll mention there. Cause just, I, I don't really, I don't, I haven't dug into it enough. If you asked right. me say in like January, I'd probably have, well, oh, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. I will. Don't you worry. I, uh, so let's see today. I'll give you like five months to get your four and a half months to get your act together and we'll come back. Sounds um, good. Tell people where they can find your work and follow you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just going to point everyone to the direction of Twitter. Um, if you guys don't have a Twitter, you can follow me. Um, you know, you, well, if you don't have a Twitter, you can't follow me. But <laughs> so get so get on Twitter. First of all, what are yeah. you doing? 
<laughs> yeah, get on Twitter. Uh, it's the best, in my opinion, it's the best um, platform uh, because, I mean, it's literally copying everything. You have, what was it, uh, the Clubhouse. Now they have spaces. They're just going to, they're absorbing everyone, you know? So it's like <laughs> Twitter has everything. Um, <laughs> you can follow me at JK Bogan. Uh, but if you don't have Twitter, you can also find my YouTube channel, uh, Jake Allen Bogan. It's just my full name. Um, and then downtownrams.com is uh, my company's website. Uh, we do yeah. draft content, Rams content, and uh, fantasy football content. So, excellent. Yeah. And 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 since since you heard him, he has to come back. Um, so probably around Senior Bowl time or whatever, around time when people get serious about this. Sounds uh, good. And. A bunch of players would have moved up and moved off and moved down and all that good stuff by that point. And I will fall in and out of love with several more undersized three techniques. Uh, <laughs> it, knowing you have a problem is the first step towards healing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I get burned almost every year with falling in love with an undersized three tech. Oh, but, yeah. I get burned with quarterbacks. I hit on a bunch of them. Like I hit on, you know, Mahomes and Lamar and all those guys. But then I miss on, well, Chad Kelly. I miss on Tyree Jackson was my guy. Oh, I love that athleticism Tyree and everything. Uh, you know, Wait, isn't, he, isn't he trying to make the, um, the switch to tight end? He is. I don't know what they're doing with that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. And then uh, speaking of a guy that was trying to make it switch his tight end in Philly and got beat out by Tyree Jackson, Hakeem Butler, man. Oh, yeah. Poor one out for Hakeem Butler. He had, uh, I, I, I don't know. I think he could have been just a superstar. Honestly, he really could have um, circumstances, man. It's everything. I, I just, uh, in Arizona, didn't really give him much of a chance. Then he broke his hand and, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> right. right. But this is what I'm healing. That's right. At some point we'll have a, we'll just do a thing which nothing but like, we just descend into the depths of guys. All oh, the stories I could tell. Oh, my Andre Woodson tale of woe. Well, once again, that's another show. Uh, thank everyone who's checked, checked this out. Uh, I will definitely be talking to Jake again. One, because he's like me. He could just go. And, uh, and two, we like so many of the same players. So he's a genius, obviously. Oh, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I've got that. My motor does not run hot and cold. It's very hot. I can tell you that. So I love I that. Know you're the same. <laughs> Indeed. Well, once again, it's been an honor, a pleasure, and a privilege. Um, Bill Carroll of Zinni 62 Media and Around the Block Sports and Nuts and Bolts Sports and Consistent Draft Services. Um, once again, Jake from Downtown Rams. Always a pleasure. We will do this again soon. Thank you so much, Bill.